Let's do this. Get ready for the Dirt Life Show. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. This fabulous Monday night. We are at Four Wheel Parts in Temecula, California with none other than Polaris Youth Razor Four Wheel Parts athlete Jacob Peter. What's up, Jacob? How are you, buddy? I'm good. <laughs> You're doing awesome today? Yeah. Did you enjoy the pizza that we got? Yeah, it was pretty nice. <laughs> did you have any of the jalapeno pizza, or did you just eat pepperoni? I did not. I only had pepperoni. Oh, weak sauce, dude. What about you, Caden Danbury? Caden's going <laughs> to be the... I was a wussy on that. <laughs> Kaden... I went straight to pepperoni. You went straight to pepperoni? You just yeah. slid into the pepperoni? Yeah. Caden's uh, going to be our co-host tonight. Caden Danbury, thank you very much for coming and supporting the show. We really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, like I said, welcome to episode 83 of the Dirt Live show. Uh, I'm Georgie Hamill, your guys' host. Um, and I had a bunch of people asking me to start saying that at the beginning of the shows because they were like, who the heck is this dude? So I'm going to try to start saying it at the beginning of every show. Um, we are on Instagram Live today as well. Um, Sarah Danbury is going to be helping out a little bit, and she's going to try to see if she can uh, answer some of the, or excuse me, tell us about some of the comments that are coming in. So you guys are more than welcome to comment in on Instagram. You can always hang out with us on Facebook Live. You can hang out with us on YouTube Live, even though I'm not sure if it's working today. Um, but anyways, um, you can connect with us. All kinds of different ways, but the best way is on Instagram, at The Dirt Life Show. And uh, you can mention us, slide into our DMs, anything you want. We'll do as be best we can to uh, share all the content that you guys provide. We've been getting a bunch of people seeing the van driving around Southern California. It's been super, super cool that they share those pictures and uh, tag us in them. So keep doing that and helping us out, getting our name out there. Uh, man, today's going to be a really cool show. We got a couple cool guests calling in. We got uh, Mikey Kelly going to call in. He's one of your guys' friends, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he just did the Silver State 300. Uh, he also did it with his buddy Johnny Cultura, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they both did it together, right? Yeah, no. they switched off. In an RS1? In an RS1. It was pretty cool. That's cool. So uh, Johnny's also going to be calling in a little bit later. Uh, it's going to be really cool to talk with him and Mikey and see how their race was. I didn't get to go to the Silver State 300. I think both of the you guys both did, right? Yeah, we yeah, saw we each went. other. So I'm pretty jealous of both of these guys and the two guests that are going to call in. We're going to get uh, the lowdown on what happened at the races, what happened with their race. Caden and uh, Jacob will be able to tell us a little bit of behind the scenes. And, uh, man, another fun thing that we're going to do today, I don't think Caden knows this yet, and Jacob may not either, but we're going to play a battle royale, Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader? Oh, God. So now the teacher oh becomes a student. Caden Danbury has been supplying us with all these Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader questions for the last couple months here. Thank you very much for doing that, by the way, Caden. Uh, and now he's going to be uh, battling on those questions. So it'll be pretty fun to see who answers the best. I got 11 questions, so. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so before we get into the, the show and have the, our guests call in, I want to thank all of our sponsors. I think, Jacob, you and I share a sponsor with KMC Wheels, don't we? Yeah, we do. How do you like their wheels? They're really good. What's your favorite color? Uh, they're silver. Oh, you like the silver ones, like the, the polished ones? Yeah. Or the, like the gray ones? No, the polished ones. The polished ones are pretty sick, right? Yeah. Do you have the forged ones? Or just the polished ones? Just the polished ones. Just the polished ones. Dude, those are so cool, though, man. Like, keeping it old school, like Rob McCachran style, huh? Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, by the way, since I mentioned Rob's name, he's going to be coming up on the show, so we'll talk more about that a little bit later. He's going to be coming up next Monday. Um, so thank you to the guys at KMC Wheels for uh, sponsoring uh, Jacob over here and also sponsoring the Dirt Life Show. We really appreciate it. Um, as you can see, I have a nice new fancy KMC T-shirt, and uh, you can go over to wheelmerch.com and uh, get all kinds of cool stuff, man. They have a bunch of cool EFX tires. Is also a sponsor of the show. they got EFX gear. Uh, they got a bunch of KMC gear. You guys can go get hats, shirts, all kinds of cool stuff at wheelmerch.com uh, and you can always uh, visit any of the four wheel parts dealerships in Southern California or even in your area and you can uh, ask them about some KMC wheels uh, and see what kind of stuff that they can hook your ride up with the products are just amazing and uh, like Jacob said you can get the polished ones so uh, I'd also like to thank the guys over at uh, shock therapy for always being a partner of the show. Those guys do fantastic work. Um, in fact, uh, we built an, a Razor RS1 for the UTV World Championships uh, just about a year ago, and uh, that was with uh, Craig Scanlon, one of our good friends. And uh, Craig is now going to let one of his buddies and one of Chris and Matlock, and you guys may know him too, his name is Max Eddy. He's going to be driving that in the Sonora Rally. So he's going to be doing the road book in that car. 
Um, he's going to be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And all he had to do was switch some clickers on his shock therapy suspension. He's going to go out there and kill it with that thing. So it's really cool that Craig let us do that. It's really cool that the guys over at Shock Therapy gave us the opportunity to put some Fox uh, RC2s on there and got it all dialed in. It was fun to race it at the UTV Worlds, and I'm sure that Max is going to have a great time racing that bad boy at the Sonora Rally. Uh, thank you to the guys at Zollinger Racing Products. Those guys make fantastic UTV parts. I say it every episode. They're uh, elevating the game with the pieces that they make, their attention to detail, and the amazing craftsmanship that they put in. Go over to ZollingerRacingProducts.com and uh, use the code DIRTLIFE. You can save a whole bunch of money on any of the products that they make. And if you want to call them, maybe you don't want to go online, uh, call over there and tell them that the Dirt Life sent you, and they'll be able to hook you up. Thank you to Josh over at Cryo Heat for always being a partner of the show this year. He's done uh, an amazing job. Uh, in fact, uh, excuse me, Braden Baker, we saw him yesterday as well after the Silver State 300, and he had one of the Pro Mod transmissions that Cryo Heat uh, provided to him for his race car, and he said that thing is sweet, man. So go ahead and check out some of the stuff that uh, Cryo Heat offers at cryoheat.com. And if you want to call over there and get some work done, call over there and say the Dirt Life sent you, and uh, they'll help you out. And thank you to the guys over at Solder Weld for always being so awesome. They make this awesome welding blanket, and they make an off-road repair kit that can repair your race or your ride. Uh, it's just like a first aid kit for your UTV, and you can put it in there, and uh, you can bond any type of metal, uh, fix radiators, rims, anything that uh, happens on the trail or during a race. All you need is map gas, uh, and you can use the code DIRTLIFE over at solderweld.com. Save a whole bunch of money and pick up one of those badass kits for uh, for your UTV. Um, so, like I said, we're at four-wheel parts in Temecula. You might see a little bit of commotion going on in the background. That's because these guys are still open. So thank you very much for those guys uh, dealing with us, setting up this whole... Uh, I don't know, studio set, we'll call it, makeshift studio set in the middle of their store and still conducting business. It's awesome that they were able to let us do that. So uh, thank you to all the guys behind the scenes and all the guys in uh, the front of the scenes, too, that are helping out. So we really appreciate Four Wheel Parts. Well, like I said, tonight's featured guest is uh, Jacob Peter. Jacob has been uh, racing for probably, so. you've been racing probably for longer than I have been racing side-by-sides, actually. How long have you been racing... Uh, well, anything for two wheels or four wheels. Uh, I've been racing since 2012. 2012, huh? Yeah. I started my side by side career in late 2014, so you got two years on me, buddy. That's pretty cool, man. How'd you get into it? Mm, well, we just started off with quads, and then I got my first razor. Oh, really? Yeah, we showed up to the very first world championship, and then from there on out, we just started racing. And that's you just started making friends and all kinds of fun stuff? Yeah. Dang, that's pretty cool. So were your parents into the side-by-side -side racing or into, like, quad racing and stuff like that, or no? Like, how did you get into it? Did you just all of a sudden see it on a picture, and you're like, dude, I want to get into those things. Those are so cool. No, we just went to the desert, and then one day I just drove a car, and uh, then my dad oh, decided that we should start racing. Oh, because you were good at driving a car, huh? And yeah. dad sees, like, oh, Jacob's pretty good at this, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dang, that's pretty cool. So did your family go to the desert then, and that's how you got into it? So you were out there when you were little? Yeah. We used to go to the desert a lot. Used to? Now you don't because you race so much or what? Well, we haven't gone a lot now. There, there's a lot of races going on. Yeah, that's true, right? Caden, you've been going to the desert since you were little too, right? Yeah, I think I, I was three weeks. My mom took me in her truck. Well, I went on, like, this little, like, tour thing. In the oh, we're not worried about Caden hurting his neck at three weeks. We're just worried about him getting his dirt life started. Yeah, we need to start it. <laughs> I mean, that's what I would have done. That's pretty cool. Uh, and did you, have you been to the desert with Jacob before, too, or no? Uh, actually, I stayed at Compound, and maybe a half a mile away is What is where this, he like, stays. are you flexing on us right now? You stay no. at a compound <laughs> in the desert, or what? No, we're not. I'm not flexing at I all. I feel like he just totally flexed on us, Jacob, don't you? He stays at I one, do. too. So. Oh, you do? You stay at a compound, too? I stay on a friend's 600-acre lot. Really? Yeah. How's now, that? Now, that's, now that's nice. balling right there. That is flexing on us yeah. hard right there. I think Jacob won up us, like, pretty big because yeah, I would we're just. On, we're on 60 er, my, my 60 compound, acres. My compound consists of, like, a toy hauler. That's about it. So, and then just in the middle of the desert. Like, middle of the desert, yeah. <laughs> I, I live my dirt life, like, not bougie like you guys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it is pretty cool that you guys grew up in the desert so young. When you went out there, um, kind of like the story Caden just said, maybe you have a story. Like, do you remember the first time that you went out there? Uh, the first time I went out there, we just brought our quad. They had, like, a little, they had, like, a little track it just went around in a bunch of corners. Oh, like one of those little dug-in tracks by camp? Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
How'd you do? Was you, were you, like, really good at riding the quad or no? I mean, I think so. I don't really remember. It was a really long time ago. Do you have any video? Did your parents video you at all? Uh, I got a bunch of pictures. Ooh, that's cool. So uh, with our intro, uh, we have you on a, what was it, a red quad? It looked like an ATC 70 or ATC 90 or something. Was that what it was? Uh, no, there was that, and then there was also a yellow quad. Oh, it was a yellow quad. That's what it was. What was that one? Um, Do you remember what it was? Was it LT80? I think it was. Yeah. So my sister had that same quad. I, if it was the same quad. That's that seems pretty like sweet. fast. I don't know, man. For a little kid, they are pretty quick. And they have a little two-stroke motor, and they're a CVT, just like a Polaris Razor. Yeah, like at work, I see those little kids just ripping yeah. through the squad and shooting and stuff, and they're just like on the rails. Ah! Okay, so I have an idea. And for anybody that may or may not know, Caden is a avid golf cart guy, and Jacob has been in some golf cart trouble as well. <laughs> um, so uh, these guys really like riding the golf carts and stuff, so maybe – it's a good idea to, instead of just riding the golf carts, maybe you guys get quads so you don't tear up mom's golf cart as much. Yeah. I was thinking, because everyone's got these pit bikes and stuff, like these 110s and stuff. I think I want to start up a trend where it's pit quads. And what about like the three-wheelers? Three-wheelers, they're, they're a little bit sketchy. I rode, I rode the Gonzalez's uh, three-wheeler, Anthony Gonzalez, Dallas Gonzalez. They've been on the show before. Uh, I rode their three-wheeler, and I was coming around corners with like, Ah! Yeah, it was a little bit too much. Yeah, it was like on three wheels. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> and plus, Jacob would probably tear you guys up since he's like quad god over here. Yeah, quad god. Yeah. <laughs> that's See pretty him doing wheelies past us. Dude, for real, right? Uh, I think that's pretty cool that you guys actually hang out and do all that stuff, though. And especially going to the desert. Like, uh, you know what one of my favorite things was when I grew up going to the desert? Was coming home, like, or coming back to camp. Uh, just for lunch. Like, what do you guys usually eat for lunch? Because I always, like, came back, and I'm like, oh, my God, I want something refreshing. Uh, at the desert, it, I seem to, like, we seem to pack, like, some sandwiches or something in the cooler, and then we'll just go on one big trail ride in the day. Oh, like, like well, they hit up all these big spots. Are you trying to go on an all-day trail ride too, Jacob? That's pretty gnarly. We do go on all-day, Jake. Really? Yeah. Like, from, like, when you wake up until you get back at night? Well, no, it's more of, like, later in the day and then you kind of get back when it's getting dark yeah, like it's like 10 o'clock and then you, like, yeah you for come dinner back or whatever like, yeah yeah how do you guys go then like where are you guys going to the desert ocotillo wells yeah ocotillo yeah is that where you're going to jacob yeah and where do you guys go for all day because it's not that big of an area yeah well we kind of like there's this spot called trestles uh next to these railroad tracks against the hills and it's like a bridge and it there's, like, graffiti all over the things and Oh, stuff. you cross over? Yeah, you can cross over. A lot of people park under it for shade. And we'll spend, like, an hour there just chilling out. Then we'll head over to the Shell Reef. It's a big uh, berm wall thing. They're so fun to go to. It and sounds like it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, like, whenever I was a little kid, I've always wanted to take my 170 there. One time we trailered out my 170. And uh, we ended up trailering, trailering it out. Then I drove... And then we trailered it back. Holy crap. Yeah. So um, I think one time, the biggest trail ride I've done, we got 300 miles done, and that was in my RS1. Oh, my god! With the Gonzalez's, so we, got, we got lost and stuff. We were have out you forever. Ever, have you ever tracked how far you've gone, Jacob? That three, have you gone 300 miles? Like, that's a better question. I think we went to Arizona a few, like, a year ago or so. I think we went, like, 500 miles one day. No way. See, that's like a full desert race right there. That's crazy, man. Was it? Were you tired at the end of the day? I feel like that's like you need to pack like ten sandwiches for that ride. <laughs> that were you tired at the end of the day? I didn't get to drive. Oh, so you were just the co-pilot that time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe now this time you'd get to drive since you're such a um, better driver than you were at that time, right? Yeah. Where were you at in Arizona? Do you remember? I don't know if you know, but I'm a big Arizona guy over here. I like Arizona too. I'm trying to convince my parents right now to move over there. Oh, you're they're over not, California? They're not, buy, they're not buying it right now. That's yeah. It, housing costs in Arizona, we could talk about that all day now. Uh, all right, Jacob. So if you could go uh, to Arizona or to Ocotillo Wells, where would you pick to go? Ocotillo Wells. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like Ocotillo Wells is awesome, um, but it's getting so beat up now, don't you think? Like, it's getting pretty tore up. Yeah, it's pretty beat up. I think uh, I would choose Arizona just because I've rode at Ocotillo for so long. Like, I know the trail so well. It would be cool to learn something else. Like, 
there might be different terrain there that it's a different driving style. Which yeah, might be fun. I agree with that. Like, the Ocotillo Wells is fun, but there's some sandy stuff and stuff. Um, but Arizona might have hard pack stuff, and you're sliding, and you might have the best time ever. Yeah, like, that you really don't know like what the full experience is with different types of trains and stuff. Do you think the same way, Jacob? Yeah. Well, so you would rather go to Arizona then? I mean. Or actually, you probably just want to go someplace new, I guess, huh? Yeah, because we're always. We used to always go to the desert. It's we'd always just hit up the and same. And when you spots. say the desert, you're talking about Ocotillo Wells, then, right? Yeah. So, I've only been to Ocotillo Wells, I think, once. But somebody was telling me that there's another cool place to go that's called Campo. I haven't heard of it. So I want to try to see if we could go there one of these days. We'll see what happens. That'll be fun. Um, so we can ask one of your guys' buddies when uh, when we get into it a little bit here. So I think we're gonna have uh, Mikey Kelly call in first. He should be calling in in just a second here. Um, Mikey's done a lot of racing, actually. I think he's actually probably participated in more races than all of us combined, huh? I don't know. I don't know, man, but he's doing a lot he's of races. He's done a lot, though. Yeah, for sure, a lot. Mikey Kelly, are you there? Yep, I'm here. What's up, bud? How are you? I'm doing good. Hey, maybe you could put your, uh, spe your mouth a little closer to the uh, speaker so that we could hear you a little bit better. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's a lot better. Hey, first of all, congratulations on your finish at the Silver State 300. That's awesome, buddy. Good job. Thanks. Hey, so we're sitting here next to uh, one of your buddies, Jacob Peter. He's our featured guest tonight. Uh, you got any funny stories about Jacob before we get into talking about your Silver State 300? Oh, I got a really good one. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, hit us with it, bud. Well, once I'm at Worlds, we had a brand new RS1 pretty much. I raced it one time, and we let Jacob race it because uh, <laughs> he didn't have a car ready. And um, he was going about 90, and he didn't know where he was really in a whoop section, and endoed the car and totaled it. Oh, my God. Are you serious, Jacob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did that really happen? What do you have to say for yourself here, buddy? I didn't know where I was. <laughs> 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 and you were going 90 miles an hour, and you had no idea where you were? Well, because I could see, but all the dusk was over, and there were, like, two spots. I looked exactly the same, but, of course, I had to be in the one that I didn't think I was. <laughs> the wrong spot? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story, Mikey. So what did you guys have to do? Did they come rescue you, Jacob? Yeah. We... They had... Go ahead, Mikey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we went over. The cops let us on our, like, the cops? That was close for the race. Hold on and, a second uh, here. The cops let you on? Yeah, the cops let us on the closed road to go get him. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the funniest part about it was he called us, and we were like, that's not good. We answered, and he was like, I broke the car. And we were like, can you finish? And he said, I think so. But the whole front left was just gone probably 100 yards down the road. <laughs> and Jacob, you thought you seriously thought you could finish? I mean, you could still drive with three wheels. There you go. See? The car was on its lid. <laughs> <laughs> so he just needed a little bit of help to finish is what he's trying to we say, I guess. to roll it over and drive backwards. Dude, hey, knuckles right there. I love your adversity, like trying to face adversity and just never give up attitude, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We we ended up getting a new car that they bought us to replace it. So. Oh man. So you totally smoked that one, Jacob? Yeah, that thing is that thing still sitting in our garage. Oh really? Are you gonna repair really? it and try to drive it again then? We're repairing it slowly, it's taking a long time. <laughs> Are mom and dad making you work on that thing? Uh yeah, we're getting like little parts at a time and then just adding them on. Hey, that's pretty cool, though, because that means that you're learning a lot from it, right? So not only did you learn that you're not supposed to go 90 through dust when <laughs> you can't see, but now you learn how to fix it, too, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Lesson learned. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, Mikey, we're going to talk about talk to Jacob after the commercial break and get really deep into his story. But uh, for now, maybe we could talk a little bit about the Silver State 300 and uh, what you guys did up there. Sounds good. What, uh, what, well, there was actually a, a funny question that I wanted to ask you, but how did the race start for you guys? I, it started good for me. I handed off the car to Johnny Coltora in first place by three minutes at pit three. Oh, okay. So you did a pretty good job, huh? Was the, uh, yeah. I, I wanted to know how Tekken contingency was over there because Parker was pretty awesome, but, uh, I, I heard that Silver State wasn't quite as nice. 
it was yeah it was fast and great for us it was we were the first ones through registration we got there around 7 30 and then we were like the third ones through tech oh so it wasn't too bad then no it was pretty nice that sounds nice get early get it over with um, uh, so, so some people were, t uh, messaging that background noise on Instagram was pretty bad. Okay. Uh, maybe just turn that. Yeah. It's okay. a lot better on Facebook live. Okay, cool. Instagram live is, uh, we can just shut it off too. Um, uh, okay. Uh, and Sarah, could you please pull your mic a little bit away from the top? Uh, so Mikey, I, I want, I, I always love tech and contingency. I think it's so much fun, but when, uh, when like 2020 hit, it kind of seemed like it messed everything up. Did it kind of feel like that uh, when you guys were up there at Silver State or not really? Like everybody was still pretty chill. Uh, everybody was still pretty mellow. Like you didn't really have to like wear a mask or anything. It wasn't really, it was pretty nice. Okay, cool. So you guys were able to hang out with your friends? Yeah, we were able to do all that stuff. So when did you show up to Silver State, Jacob? What day? We showed up Friday at 3.30. Oh, in the afternoon? Yeah. So it was kind of like when tech and community was ending, or? Uh, there was no tech going on when we showed up. Oh, okay, so it was all done. So you just got to hang out with all your buddies. Yeah, we hung out, and then we just, we hung out, we went to dinner, and then we just went to bed. Oh, right on. Yeah, I like that, though, because that means that you're going to see everybody, you're hanging out with your friends, your family, everybody, right? Yeah. That's what the dirt life's all about, dude. You're going to enjoy it, like, a lot and having these old guy conversations like a dude like me does when uh, when you get a little bit older. Uh, it's going to be really cool because you have so many fond memories. Like, did you meet up with Caden right when you got there, or did you see him? No, I didn't see him until the day of the race. Oh, really? Yeah, he ended up – we were at the, like, I forget what pit. I think it was pit three I saw him at first. It was pit three. Yeah, and then I saw him at seven, pit seven. And then he ended up staying the night with me in my trailer. Oh, right because on. Because they didn't, they weren't close to, they don't want to drive to Vegas. I, I wouldn't want to drive to Vegas either, just to stay at a hotel to go. Yeah, exactly. So they stayed with us, and then they took off early in the morning, and then we took off right after them. Oh, right on. So it wasn't too bad then? You guys just kind of hung out for the night? Yeah, we just, they were staying at like an RV park place. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Did you guys have bicycles and stuff? Uh, no. We had a golf cart. Oh, <laughs> no. Any funny stories from the weekend then, Jacob? Mm. We didn't really mess with that golf cart, no. <laughs> Be <laughs> that besides, golf cart? Besides, I think the night before the race, it was Anthony Gonzalez. It was a few people on the golf cart, and the cop pulled him over. And I forget what they said. It was, I remember hearing about it. I was cracking up. They got pulled over. They didn't get a ticket or anything, but they were at the gas station grabbing stuff. And the cop, uh, like, told him to go back or something. I don't really remember. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah, and then uh, right after the race... Jacob fell in the creek. No and, way. Uh, we were catching, like, these little, uh, they're called crawdads, and they're, like, lobster-looking things. And we were trying to catch them, and there's this, like, mud slick area. And all, all I remember is me on the other side of the creek and looking down at Jacob, and he steps on this thing and slips the hardest I've ever seen anyone slip right into the thing, and he could not stop slipping down right into the water. Really? Covered himself. Dude, that's crazy. Did it hurt, Jacob? No, it didn't, actually. It was weird. That's good right there. Yeah. My foot, like, slipped, and I fell really hard, but I didn't feel it. Oh, and I just, crap. I just slowly slid in. It wasn't like a fast slide. I just very gently slid in. Like slow, like slow motion, you felt like? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't hurt, though? No. Everyone around me, like, saw me and was like, oh. Like, oh, crap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to toss my phone out of my pocket. Were you fully wet, like your whole body? It got me all the way up to the... To like, like to your waistline? Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Like, did you know that you were going to slip when you were over there? I didn't. And the funny thing is, Dow slipped right there, like 10 minutes before I did. Oh, you didn't know about it? No, I was over there, but I forgot that it was right there. <laughs> oh, way to go, dude. And then right after, Deegan Gonzalez fell right in. So what would you do? You just bailed out and went and got uh, clean clothes or what? <laughs> no, not till like, the end of the night. <laughs> I uh, remember him just, like, changing outside of the truck. I'm like, you can go in our trailer and change if you want. He's like, I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have some shorts that dried super quick or what? No, I just changed straight into my... <laughs> Pajamas. Oh, right on. That works perfect then. Yeah. I like your execution. <laughs> That's funny though, man. I can't believe that you just slipped and you're just like, oh, I'm good. 
And we right after we kept on going after them. And he's just like all soaking wet and stuff. Dallas is soaking wet. Deegan's soaking wet. We're still out there. You laying on the ground trying to catch him. You didn't biff it? No. <laughs> I was trying to be careful because all of them were just going down. I'm like, I'm next. I know Dropping it. Dropping like flies? Yeah. I'm like, I'm the next one. I got to stay back. So no golf cart stories, Jacob? No. Oh, okay. So you guys were a little bit more mellow this weekend. I'm sure your moms appreciated it. <laughs> they probably did. But uh, we're, we're really busy with the car, too, like packing the get the stuff out of the trucks and stuff. Oh, so you guys afterwards. were, like, super busy, huh? We, were, uh, we got – we all kind of got it done fast. We had a lot of people to get it done. So it didn't take that long, but we, we got it done pretty nice. fast. W- what kind of stuff do you like when you do, uh, Jacob, when you have to go to a race? Do you have to help load up? Do you have to help prep the car? Like, what's the normal process that goes through? Because I know Mikey does a lot of that stuff for his dad, too. Uh, the process is – Check the car, make sure that there's, like, new belt and new air filter and everything in it. Make sure that all tire pressure's right. And then you guys got to load up, right? Yeah. Okay. So you help have to help your dad load up? Yeah, we pack a uh, cooler. We pack, like, a bunch of spare parts. Dang, you got to go full tilt, huh? Yeah. Is that what you usually do as well, Mikey? We do a little more than that, but, yeah, pretty much. And what do you guys have to take, the kitchen sink, too, or what? <laughs> well, we just... For prepping the car, we pretty much replace every single nut and bolt on the car. Let's talk a little bit closer to the speaker on your phone, please. Oh, we we pretty much just torque down every bolt to spec and change every single nut and bolt on the car that we possibly can. That's pretty cool. Uh, do you know how much older Mikey is than you, Jacob? I think he's only a year older than me. Oh, okay. So you got a little bit of uh, stepping up your game to do, huh? To torque all these bolts and do all that stuff, or do you already do that as well? Uh, I torque. I only torque uh, my wheel bolts. Your lug nuts. Yeah. Yeah. What's your torque spec for those bad boys? Mm. I think 90 is what I put them at. Mikey, is he correct? No, it's 120. Oh, you gotta go <laughs> 120. All right. So make sure you double check your uh, work next time, right, Jacob? Yeah. Mikey's got it all handled over here. I know. I, ki- I got a funny story about some lug nuts. Oh, it is about Mikey or about Jacob? This is uh, actually my D. De- this is my issue, um, and I get made fun of it for my friends. But, you know, it's my fault. I'll take it. Um, I forgot to torque my lug nuts, and I went out to practice, and I thought I heard, like, this loud noise in the rear. I'm like, that's great. That's probably my drive shaft. And Like nope, a clicking was, noise? Yeah, it was like a clicking noise, and it sounded just like a drive shaft. And uh, kept on driving by. like They were, like, looking at it, and then all of a sudden they see my tire going, woo, woo, woo. And we go, to, we go to check my tire. It's, like, barely on. Like, I forgot to tighten that tire. And that was at practice time. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Everyone's going to make fun of me. And, like, um, so every, every time they're like, did you torque your lug nuts? Did they torque your lug nuts? And uh, now, we're, now we're all, like, all about torque wrenches right now. Um, Deegan Gondalas Dallas made Deegan uh, torque hose clamps to, like, something really small just to get, like, Make make him think to do that. It was so funny. He, he was so mad at everyone. That is pretty hilarious, right? <laughs> yeah. Were you the, there for part of that as well, Mikey? No, I was there. Oh, right on. Kate hey. knows a lot about nuts and stuff. Kate <laughs> <laughs> knows, knows a lot about nuts and stuff. <laughs> oh, my God, Mikey. <laughs> hey, I got one for, uh, even better, though, because we're going to give Mikey back one just in, in a second here. All right, so, thank uh, you. Do you want to give it to him now? Uh, hey, hey, Jacob, why does Mikey have such long hair? Seems like a lot of these guys have such long hair. Casey, Mikey, um, Eddie's son, Connor, they all have long hair. They, li- they like it to flow in the wind. Is that they what like it those is? Photos. I think that's what's going on. Oh, okay. So I, think, I think that hair pick right there, that I, think they're, that I think they're digging so it. Basically, huh, so basically you're saying Mikey's hair is all about the Instagram photos? Yeah, it's for that wind. Oh, picks. I see. So, ba- so anytime Mikey does like a, a little like Instagram photo, does he have a fan in front of him so it's like flowing back? I think so. Oh, I, okay. I think, think he has a professional fan right there. Hey, rolling. but we do need to know what kind of product you use on that bad on that awesome awesome hair that you have, Mikey. I. <laughs> see, I told you, get him. <laughs> you guys, you guys got me good. <laughs> Uh, I do like the long hair, though. It's like Justin Barsha style, right? Like yeah. It's, it's super yeah. cool. Uh, 
So one of the things that I was going to ask, Mikey, was I heard that uh, you guys had a little bit of trouble at your race. Uh, say it again? I heard that you guys had a little bit of trouble at the races. Yeah, we were having some clutch problems and uh, the dipstick too broke. Yeah, so um, I think Jacob's dad actually helped out with that fix. Do you know what he did, Jacob? I do. <laughs> You want to tell the story? Because it's a pretty cool freaking story, man. We were talking about wrenching on the cars, and that's why I was leading into this, to see if you have those same MacGyver skills that your dad does. So what did he do to help fix Mikey's car? He trimmed the, he trimmed the nozzle all the way off. Mm -hmm. and then he got a quarter, put it on, siliconed it, and then grinded it to the, to the cap. Yeah. So what happened was a little bit more uh, detail was the oil dipstick had an issue and the tube that, go, that the oil goes down in when you fill it um, was basically open or leaking, right? Yeah. And then so to seal it, he used a coin to seal the whole thing shut and keep the pressure in there so that he could finish his race, right? Yeah. That's some serious MacGyver stuff, dude. If you learned anything, learn to tighten your lug nuts and don't follow Caden. And then second... Get uh, uh, some tips from your dad to freaking <laughs> to finish these races, man, because that is such a cool little trick. Yeah, Todd's got all of those little tricks. He, has he done that stuff to you before, like any of your cars? Do you have any other stories about what your dad's done to help fix you and get you back in the race? It sounds like you do, because it sounds like you might have had uh, a couple races that you needed a little bit of mechanical help. No? You guys always have perfect races? <laughs> no, I got some. I just can't. For some reason, I can't think of them right now. Oh, okay. Well, we'll come back to it then. Um, so, Mikey, he got you guys back going. That's pretty insane, dude. Yeah, he got us He got us back going, and then the terminals on the battery got loose, so the car just lost all power. Oh, really? That's yeah, it was at, like, race mile 248, and I probably sat there for like two hours ish but you got rescued yeah best in the desert like officials came on the course to come and get me but we got it fixed because i was i was pretty sure it was something with a battery but i didn't know if it was the terminals because i didn't have like a screwdriver or anything in my prp bag because we didn't put one in there way to go with but. sponsor plug dude awesome <laughs> But we we ended up back going, and by that time, it was already nighttime. And we ended up finishing it in, like, nine hours and 30 minutes. Oh, well, that's not bad. At least you guys finished, right? And then uh, John Lewis commented and said, Mikey, we heard you had a little battle with our guys from OC Fire Motorsports. Yeah, I wasn't – I heard about that, but I wasn't in the car. Johnny Coltora was in the car during that. Oh, okay. Jeremy Gray just commented in, says, what's up, guys? Um, we got a couple of other comments to come in. Uh, John Lewis also commented in and said, George, since you're on the uh, subject of UTV racing at Silver State, how about four UTVs in the top 20 overall vehicles? First place UTV beat all the unlimited buggies and Class 10 cars. Can you guys believe that? That's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, doesn't that blow your mind, Jacob? Yeah. Like, could you have been like a year ago or two years ago, could you imagine all the UTVs beating these fast cars? I could not. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, so just think about like what you guys in a couple years, like you guys are going to be faster than most of the class 10 cars and some of these other guys. Like that's crazy, right? Yeah, it's really crazy. And, and it's, this is like by the time you guys get your driver's license. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't doubt that, that the UT, some of the UTVs beat the, some of those guys are insane. And the buggies have to shift and stuff, so they have a, like a little more. And those razors can just hook the corners. And that I know, like checking over like the live tracking and stuff, they're going like 30 through the tight sections. And those buggies are big. Yeah, so they and can't they go as fast. And they got some of the bridges and stuff, so like barely making it. Like yeah, yeah that's a tight course for them. That totally makes sense. But can you believe that, Jacob? Like by the time you get your driver's license, bud, like you're gonna be going that fast in a race car. I couldn't. Don't you think that's crazy? Like, that's like, to me, I can't even think about that because it's like, that's so fast in a car, man. That's uh, really fast. Thanks for the stat, John. That was really cool to understand and hear that those UTVs are coming 
to be so fast. I do think, though, if we're talking technicalities here, it has a lot to do with the track, and it has a lot to do with uh, people's day, what they're having, their preparation and stuff. So I think that there's a lot of other uh, things that come into play. But uh, the fact that they did it is just phenomenal. So I'm really proud of all those UTV drivers that did such a good time. Uh, John Lewis also commented some sub other stuff here. Um, Outer World has the tricks. Tom Wallace said, Absolute Motorsports was the fix for everything. Has a fix for everything. So it sounds like those guys have uh, some good stuff going on. Um, a couple people commented in on YouTube saying that they can't see the feed. Well, just please head over to uh, our Facebook feed. We also turned off the Instagram as well because uh, we were having too much echo. Um, but uh, you can always join us on any of the channels uh, afterwards as well. You can go to iTunes. You can also go to Spotify, all of the uh, podcast networks, and you can see us anytime. Uh, on any of those networks. Uh, Mikey, I think we're going to have uh, your buddy Johnny Coltura in, uh, calling in in just a second here. If you want to stay on with us, we can uh, have him join with us. Or if you got to go, man, we can let you go. Stay on. Okay, sounds good. Make sure that you always have the microphone close to your mouth, all right? Um, do you guys want to uh, play Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader with Caden and, uh, <laughs> and Jacob here? Here we go. Uh, hang on, let me join these calls real quick so that we can get everybody on board here. So, uh, I, th I think we got everybody on board. Johnny Quiltura, are you there, buddy? Yup. What's up, dude? How are you doing? Good. Did you have a good Silver State? It sounds like you guys had a little bit of uh, fighting with the car, but uh, <laughs> you got some MacGyver help and they fixed your car for you, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we uh, had Todd Peter come in, like they said, with a nickel, actually. But Oh, yeah, yeah I knew it was in. some sort of coin. Yeah, but uh, you got that old fish. I thought it but the oil started getting out, but I made it to pit six. Johnny, I don't know if uh, you're having a little bit of done. I don't know if you're having a little bit of cell service issues, but maybe you could get either a little bit uh, closer to Wi-Fi, or maybe you could have a little bit better cell phone service. If it keeps going in and out, we're going to disconnect with you, but hopefully we can keep the conversation going here, buddy. Yeah. Uh, could you hear me better now? Yeah, we're doing good. Okay. Yeah. So I ran from pit three to pit six, and then I when the car got there. Uh, the oil was leaking out, so then Todd got that fixed, and it was just all ready to go to the finish. It sounds like your dad has all the fixes, right, Jacob? <laughs> yeah. Does he help out a lot at the house, too? What happens if mom's, like, uh, sink doesn't work or the dishwasher doesn't work? Dad come in there and hit it with uh, the nickel or the quarter, fix it with some coins? And some JB <laughs> weld. Yeah, hits it with the JB weld. I like that style, though, man. My dad does the same thing, so you got to learn from your pops here. Um, so uh, uh, one of the comments that came in was uh, Crystal Chapman, or Chipman said, uh, ask Jake about his KOH fix. So you raced KOH? I did not. Okay. Well, I wonder what that KOH fix was. Did you help somebody else without fixing something? No. Oh, okay. Well, Crystal, I have no idea what you're talking about then because he doesn't know either. So we'll have to see what the, the KOH fix means uh, from her, <laughs> excuse me, what she's asking. So um, so what did, uh, excuse me, um, Johnny, what was the, uh, the mile marker that you gave the car back to Mikey? Okay, so when I got in the car, it was at pit three at mile 93. And then after that, we, uh, I ran all the way to pit six and before pit six we had some clutch problems and then uh another guy told me the clutch wasn't engaging right so i just he's like throw a rock at the clutch if uh the car doesn't turn off because it shut off on me so i got that all running again by throwing a rock at it yep i did i own motorsports this this he whole like do that this whole Silver State thing just seems like MacGyver tricks all over the place, man. Yeah, That's he crazy. Came in, he came into pit five, and uh, he stopped, and the car shut off. I was actually helping them pit, and we tried pushing him to get him going, and it would not go. So we had to pull off the clutch cover. We grabbed a hammer. And we were just banging on the clutch. We had like three rocks, maybe. I don't know how big. Just like um, big boulder kind of rocks. They weren't big. 
boulder, but they were, like, stuck inside the clutch so it wouldn't, like, compress. Oh, okay. And it was just kind of messed up. And we kept on hitting it, hitting it. And we had maybe, we had so much dirt on the pit mat right after. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of dirt in the clutch so it wouldn't, like, it would just stall as soon as it stopped. And we tried pushing him to start. And as soon as we banged it out, it was fine. He kept on going, but it must have happened again. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, did you see all the dirt come out as well, Jacob? I wasn't at pit five. Oh, you weren't? Where were you at? I was at pit six because you can't travel to pit five and then make it to pit six before the car can. Oh, okay, because it's too quick, so yeah, you have to go the around. Mount, the, uh, they have, like, a the splits between five and six, and then they have the race mile. And, like, even if he averaged 60 miles an hour, there's zero possible way of making it to six. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just too far. Okay, Crystal uh, commented back in and said, remind Jake about his dad's Jeep fix while uh, we were out chasing the hammers sometime. Something to do with breakfast. <laughs> oh, here we go, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob's already laughing. What is she talking about? We had broke the radiator in the, in the Jeep because we were trying to hook it up on a trailer with, because my dad wanted to see the Jeep flex, so I had to drive it sideways on a trailer. You did? Yeah. And then you just hear a big crash and the radiator broke. And Ooh. we found out that you could just crack eggs and it was leaking water everywhere. So we cracked eggs and put it inside the radiator. Yeah. And it seals it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good trick. Dude, you, get, you guys' MacGyver status is like on another level, dude. I like it. So now what happens if you ever get a hole in your radiator when you're out there uh, on the track? Other than using a solder weld off-road repair kit, what would you do next? Probably cut, pack a couple of eggs in a cooler. Dude, I like your style, I man. I see that sponsor plug. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, though, man. I, uh, we actually did that with eggs, and if you include a little bit of pepper, it sweetens the deal a little bit. So. Uh, it makes it a little bit stronger. Uh, yeah, thanks, Crystal, for the uh, for the comment. That's pretty cool, though. That you guys got it fixed, huh, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, that's a good story, though. Yeah. Did uh, have great you got? Go ahead. I don't know if that was Johnny or uh, Mikey that was talking. It's great to have Todd in the pits because he's knowledgeable with everything. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to have to go ahead and turn around. We'll uh, face our camera over here, and we'll point down at the audience a little bit. Todd, go ahead and give them a wave over here. <laughs> Thanks for having uh, help save their races, buddy. Um, so let's have uh, uh, a little bit of this are you smarter than a third grader. We'll just do one question each to uh, Mikey and uh, Johnny, and then we'll start playing the game with you guys. Is that cool? All right. All right, so do you remember any of the questions that you've uh, submitted in, Caden? No. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys want to play real quick, Johnny and <coughs> excuse me, and Mikey? Yeah. All right, so it's a two-question battle. So whoever gets – actually, we've got to have a three-question battle. So you guys both have to use your name as your buzzer, which means you have to say your name, and then you can say the answer after that so that we know. Are you guys ready to go? Yep. Yep. All right. So bo uh, both of you guys, make sure that you have your microphones really close to you so that we can hear you. How many minutes are in half an hour? 30. 30. Oh, Mikey. 30. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to give it to Mikey since he followed the rules there. <laughs> All right. Good job. Um, let's try to answer a little bit faster next time. <laughs> if Okay. Ready for question number two? If it's 5.30 when you leave the store and 6.15 uh, when you get home, how long did it take you? Mikey, Johnny. five minutes. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like Mikey got that on the li just a little bit of an edge. Dude, what do you guys think? I think so it was Mikey. Yeah. So what would you say, Mikey? What was your answer? 45 minutes. Yeah, that's right. Johnny, I, I feel like you knew the answer, but, bud, you were just, a, like, not even a millisecond too slow. I'll get quicker. Yeah, there you go, dude. See, that's get the freak, that's the mindset of a racer, right? You always think of positive, what you're going to do better for next time. So, wait, thank you guys for calling in. I'm really glad that uh, you guys did end up finishing your Silver State, even though it was a little bit late. You know, sometimes those, uh, those races that when you're out there and you're out there the, in the dark or in the cold, like those make you think of what you can do better at for the next races, don't they? Yeah. So you guys, did you guys both learn from it? 
I hope Johnny yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. So when we actually fixed the car, we took the sat phone and some other things out of the car because we we're like, well, we'll finish since we uh, since we like fixed the car. We thought it was all done, but then we had some mechanical problems. But always remember to keep the good stuff in the car. Yeah, exactly. Never, ever leave the toolbox. Uh, never close the toolbox before the job is done, right? You always got to have everything ready to go. Uh, well, I appreciate both of you guys calling in. And, and like I said before, when uh, we first started talking with Mikey, congratulations on finishing. It sounds like you guys had a little bit of adversity, but it's always a good thing when you guys finish the races, man. So you got to pat yourselves on the back for that. And then obviously you got to do better next time. Thanks. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, we'll see you guys online uh, and Instagram and stuff like that. Can you guys please each say, uh, how about, Mikey, you go first. Say your Instagram handle so anybody that's watching us can follow you. At Mikey underscore Kelly 177. Okay, cool. And then uh, go ahead, Johnny, give them yours. At Johnny Cultura 54. Okay, perfect. Good well, job, guys. Yeah, great job. And thank you guys for coming on the show in such short notice, too. And, again, like I said, it was awesome that to hear your guys' uh, fixes and everything. I'm glad that your family and all the families that went out to support you are all home safe. Yep. All right, boys. We'll, we'll catch you guys later. All right. Thank you. No problem. We'll see you. Bye. That was pretty cool, though. Like, yeah. you got to admit, like, Jacob, whenever you go to the races, do you expect to um, have issues? No, right? No. Yeah, you always expect to do well, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the whole goal. Uh, but when you're faced with adversity, how you handle it is one of the most important things in your whole life, not just racing. So yeah. what you're learning at the track is going to benefit you for the rest of your life. It's pretty cool that you guys were able to help them and that they were able to go uh, bring the car home for a finish, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so, awesome. Uh, all right, so... <sighs> We already started oh God. breaking the surface. Caden, are you nervous? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The team now becomes the student, buddy. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, your name is your buzzer. So you have to say your name before the question, okay? Or excuse me, before you answer the question, all right? Okay. You ready, Jacob? Yep. All right. Uh, let's see here. Wait, we already did this question, right? Here, I'm just going to start out with one that we already did to see if you guys are paying attention. What's 25? Oh, no, we didn't do this one. What's 25 times 3? Jacob. Jacob. 75. Dang, look at him with that whole shot. I was not expecting that. Hold I on. Dude, he smoked <laughs> you right there, King. <laughs> I barely processed that. He, he seriously came. I wasn't even done said, reading the question. He I already said got three the answer. in my head, and he said 25 as I said three in my I head. I feel like I was barely done, like, finishing the question. He was like, boom. Oh, God, Dude, I'm scared now. <laughs> I know. I feel like he's coming out firing. <laughs> oh, he needs to go against Maddie. Uh Maddie was pretty good, but uh, her and Kristen Matlock battled so hard. Did you see that Instagram live that we did? Yeah, I watched it after because I couldn't join. I was so yeah. bummed. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so the next question. Uh, keep track of your scores, okay? Uh, Julius Caesar was the empire, uh, emperor of what empire? This one's kind of hard. I don't know if the adults in our audience know what the answer to this is. Uh, I can read the question again, and we're going to have the camera on the adults while I read this question to see how confused they get. Julius, <laughs> Julius Caesar was the emperor of what empire? Sarah. Oh, Sarah's going. Uh, she wrote these. That's why. Yeah. No, I, I actually have them. Um, hold on. We can't hear her because she doesn't have the microphone. So what's the answer, boys? Who's going? Mm. Julius Caesar was the emperor of what empire? Just throw it out there. It's easy. It's the something empire. It may or may not start with R O M A N. Roman? Oh. The Kate, Roman Empire? Oh, oh there it. we go. Finally. <laughs> All right. Good job, boys. Uh, some of these, like, I don't understand. Like, I never learned any of this stuff when I was. I think a, I've learned it, but it's just not at the top of my head right now. Yeah, I just don't remember it. It's crazy because I never even would remember that. Uh, okay. Tied one to one. Jacob, you got to start, like, mashing the throttle here, buddy. Uh, what did colonists dump in the Boston Harbor? Jacob. Ooh, Jacob. T. Dang! I know that. That was, dude, that was pretty fast, too. Like, when he's on fire, he's on fire, yeah. dude. <laughs> uh, okay, so two to one. Caden, you got to step it up. Um, 
Next question. The person in a novel who tells the story from a third-person perspective is called what? So, like, when somebody's, like, uh, uh, oh, speaking. Oh, wait. Um, commentator. Kind of. It's pretty close. The answer, the answer is not that because it's not TV, um, like, when they're talking about telling it. But it's really close to that. It's kind of like the same thing, but it's somebody who tells a story instead of, like, mentioning a game or something like that. Narrator? Dang, Jacob got it again. Dude, Jacob's doing pretty good at this. Are you smarter than the third grade? Hey, Caden. Should I fire you and just hire him to do all the third oh, grader no. questions right on? <laughs> or maybe we have two. Maybe he does it sometimes, and then maybe you That's do it sometimes. Yeah. You guys can do part-time each one. That would be pretty cool, right? Um, okay, so how many points do you have, Jacob? Three. You got three? And, Caden, you're at one? One. Okay. So you really got to step it up, I really huh? got to step it up. Okay. The main series of events in a story is called what? Like the main series of an event or the main, the main idea, the main portion of a story is called what? It starts with a P. <laughs> it starts with P, ends with L O T. Plot? There you go. Uh, uh, Kaden plot. God, I'm stuck on my buzzer. Oh, man. Did you know that one, Jacob, or no? Like, I wasn't. I was stuck. I feel like these third grade questions are like, because I was these looking. They're more like fifth grade. When I looked online, online the f- you made them. No, he, not, not he's these made, ones. When I looked online, there was there was first grade questions also in there, and I couldn't even do the first grade ones. I was totally confused at first yeah, grade, and then I started seeing these, and I was like, dude, this feels like college to me. <laughs> like, it's way way too far. Uh, yeah, some of the people that are actually online are commenting in and saying that they have it. Uh, uh, Sean actually commented in t- Malinban, Malinbanan? I don't know how to say your name, buddy. Uh, Mikey and John were killing it. Uh, I navigated for my 13-year-old in U991, 10th place. Oh, good job, buddy. Uh, yeah, and then Tyrone just jumped on. What's up, Tyrone? Tyrone knew the Roman Empire. He knew the answer to that one. All right, are you guys ready for the next question? What's the score? Two to three. Two to three? All right. Uh, hey, you want to know a little, t- a little tip? Yes. Whenever you speak about someone, you always say them first, so it would be three to two. And then whenever you say somebody's name, you always say their name first and then your name second. So Jacob and Caden, or Caden and Jacob if he's saying it. So anytime you say it, always say them first. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Uh Uh-huh. Student becomes a teacher. Uh, Okay. Let's see here. The main series. Oh, what phenomenon might be felt on the surface when two tectonic plates rub against each other. Earthquake. Caden, earthquake. Yeah, tied it up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, God. You're stressing out over here so hard. Now we're tied. All right, Jacob, what do you think? Are you just giving Caden a little bit of a break here, like kind of letting him catch back up? Get, his, com- get his confidence, and then you're just going to come in and sweep? He said the question first, and I forgot that he had to say his name. So, <laughs> Oh, so now oh, we're Kaden talking rules here. Caden Kaden kind of did cheat a little bit right there, huh? Should, God, we give it? Like, <laughs> Should we give it to him? Should we be nice and just give it to him? Yeah. Caden Earthquake, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since he's been the one that's helped out so many times with Are You Smarter Than Third Grader, we'll let it slide this time. We need, right? to, f- we need to figure out some buzzers for you. To- <laughs> yeah, we should get those buzzers. Like those staples things that you just hit? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Next question is, which planet is the closest to the sun? Oh, um... I feel like Jacob knows this. Like, it's on the tip of his tongue. Jacob Mercury? Yep. Oh, I was going to say that. Dude, he got sure. it. Caden, he's pulling it back out, oh, dude. Oh, God. He's getting it. Uh, okay. So, the let's see here. We have two questions left. What's the score? It's three, three to four. four. Three to four? All right. So, you still have a chance, Caden, but that means you got to get both of them right. If he gets one of these right, then you're out. All right. Next question. What resource covers most of the earth. Jacob Water. Caden. Oh, s- <laughs> uh, should we just give a bonus question just for uh, yeah. giggles and see who has it? Okay. Jacob, first of all, congratulations on your win, buddy. It's a magnificent victory over here. You worked really hard for this one. Tra- you studied before, huh? The training paid off. All I did this, not study. All of the schooling paid off. All your hard work. It's doing really well, man. We got to get you on the podium to talk about your uh, are you smarter than a third grader victory, okay? Uh, all right, last question, just for a uh, bonus question. 
A landscape where the most prominent feature are trees is called Jacob Forest. Dang, Caden! <laughs> His processor speeds <laughs> way faster. <laughs> That's I'm hilarious. I'm barely understanding some of them. <laughs> I know. I feel like I'm like just barely finishing the question, and Jacob's on fire, like yeah, answering. He's like them. Thinking in the future. I know, right? So uh, good job, Jacob. You Thank nailed you. those things. So, uh, are you smart? Like, are you really smart with books and and schoolwork and stuff like that? Yeah. Nice. That's what I like to hear, man. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So it's cool to see that both of you guys have different personalities and obviously, excuse me, uh, different ways to uh, process information. The yeah. cool part about that is, is I've been watching a lot of Supercross lately, and the science of Supercross actually tells how the brain works when these processes happen. The certain parts of the brain that fire, what your visual cortex sees, and how you process the information. So you can tell, like, after you know some of these brain therapies and things like that, that what you can work on to make your brains operate both better. It's oh, pretty rad. That program. It's it's really cool. And some of these things, like I can tell you guys or text message you guys some of the articles to read, but it's pretty cool. And the best part about it is, is I would have never known any of this stuff um, had I not gone to Texas to help get my eyes and brain repaired or fixed a little bit better. And all of these guys, like Eli Tomac, Travis Pastrana, all of these guys have been, even Ricky Carmichael, I think, have been seeing these doctors to help uh, prepare their visual cortex to be able to process brain uh, information and things that come at them faster because they need to have that processing power. It's really crazy. And all you have to do is these little exercises, like to follow your uh, eyes back and forth. You follow these little dots and stuff. It's pretty cool. So I'm happy to show you guys if you guys are ever interested. I'm interested. Yeah, it's neat. So do you, I know, Caden, you do a little bit, but do you do any training, Jacob, like physical training or running or anything like that, boxing, anything? Uh, I have to do a mile every, I think it's every other week for school. Oh, okay. That's about it, though? No, and then at home, I just do a workout every once in a while. Oh, okay, cool. Well, these are like the same thing. You would have to do these workouts, but you have to do them on a regimen. And they have these things called metronomes, which is like a little beep that you program on your phone. So it goes doot, doot, doot. Or it goes really fast, like when you're like really good at it. And you have to follow on these metronomes, your eyes and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, one thing we do at training is we go on like the stopwatch. And we have to start it. And then, like, s let it go for a little bit. And then you got to, you have to t uh, tap uh, lap twice. And you got to, like, but you have to, like, keep your finger low. Yeah. And me and my coach always battle, like, who can get the fastest time. And at first, I was, like, 0.14 on the seconds. Mm -hmm. And I think now I'm 0.6. Nice. I've just been practicing. And you keep on doing that. And we also do, like, where we have to close one eye and we throw the ball at the wall. And yep. keep on catching it with one hand. Yep. And we do the other hand, and, like, it gets you to focus and, like, get your, like, focus way better. Like, if I'm not focusing at school, I go in. I start throwing the ball on the wall, and then after, I'm doing better. Dude, I totally love that you're talking about that stuff. They have these, like, F1 drivers do this all the time. They have these. Have you ever actually played? It's at, like, amusement parks when you have that little, uh, I don't know what it's called, like a little hammer in your hand, and you hit the little alligators or whatever pop up out yeah. of the things. It's kind of like that, but it's uh, it's visual. So you visual, have, yeah. like, yellow lights, green lights, red lights, and all this stuff, and you have to tap them, like, and hit them once or twice, like all of this crazy stuff, and that prepares your – your mind and your eyes to be able to process information faster. So in the case when Jacob was going 90 miles an hour and he <laughs> went into the dust, like if, uh, first of all, his processor works really good, like you said, Caden. Right. But if he had that little tiny edge, it might have pre prepared him a little bit better to pick the right choice a little bit faster. Yeah, one thing I noticed has helped me is that training, we get in the push-up position or the plank position, mm -hmm. and we have to use our peripheral, peripheral I can barely say it. No, that's vision. the right word. And, um... And you s and you stay there in the plank, and then there's like five dots across, and uh, you go against someone, and your color's blue, for example. And you gotta like look at the same spot, but like use your peripheral vision, and you gotta tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, and you gotta and you gotta like get the most points out of someone. It's really fun. And I, I was looking, I was actually looking at those little dot tapping things. They're like five hundred bucks. I'm like, mm -mm. whoa, dang. Yeah, but they like they didn't look. I thought they were gonna be like. 200 bucks with our 500 bucks. Like, That's Ooh. crazy. But so you, maybe you could make your own. Maybe you could do like your own little thing. Like, or yeah, your own little process. Yeah, my mom got me like the, the non uh, colored one. So it's just like you could just set them up like yellow, red, yellow, red. Like, and then she can call it a, a, a color. And you go like that. I don't know about you, Caden, but I feel like with. Uh, 
Jacob's processing power already, if he practiced some of this stuff, it'd be like phenomenal how good he gets. <laughs> really you, fast. Don't you think? Yeah, it would be really fast. And if there's any third grader questions that we need to uh, ask again, we could probably hire him. Yeah. And maybe one of these days when you take a day off from the third grader stuff or if you're busy, then we could hire Jacob and he can help us out. Yeah, I guess we'll <laughs> get some good questions. questions. Yeah. Um, okay, so what do you guys think about taking a commercial break? And then we'll come back in and we'll get into uh, Jacob's story a little bit more. Yeah. All right. We are going to go to a commercial break, and we are going to keep letting the kids uh, do their due diligence taking over the Dirt Life show today. We will be right back. Woohoo. You ready to test these tires out? I was born ready. Let it rip. Shock Therapy, the premier UTV suspension tuning company. We test daily with the leading manufacturers in the industry to perfect our shock tunes and race-proven components for all UTVs. Whether it's high-speed racing or slower trails, we have a suspension tune that is perfect for your driving style. Visit shocktherapist.com to improve your ride today. Zollinger Racing builds the best aftermarket products available, products for your UTV or snowmobile, including billet radius rods, billet tie rods, billet steering knuckles, billet steering racks, alternator kits, and much more. All manufactured in the United States in-house at their headquarters in Nibley, Utah. Travis Zollinger and his team test in some of the most brutal conditions, racing in places like the Best in the Desert Mint 400, Ultra 4 King of the Hammers, UTV World Championships, and many more. Visit ZollingerRacingProducts.com and use the code DIRTLIFE to get 10% off your next purchase and join us on social media at Zollinger Racing Products to see our products in action. Zollinger Racing, the best products, period. Yeah, finally, we got Lance from Solderweld in the studio. Oh, Thanks for coming down, bud. Hey, why don't we just record a commercial now? Yeah, why not? So good to be here, man. It's been a lot of trying to get down here forever, uh, and I uh, wanted to talk about the off-road kit. Dude, I love those things. I got it in my uh, pack. Yeah, we're running uh, hundreds of uh, vehicles now running them, whether it's a UTV or some guy's got it in a backpack and it was motocross. He's got uh, everything he needs to make a fix right there on the fly, out on the trail, uh, or in the desert, whatever it is. Well, since I've already used one, I kind of know what to use it for, but uh, explain what it does. All right, so let's pull one out real quick. You've got your aluminum rods. Remember, they're rods, right? So, uh, you know, light torch, small torch. You can uh, throw it in there or throw it on the rig with your flux. It decontaminates and cleans like, a, let's say, a radiator. You get a random rock chip runs through uh, as you're racing. You get a rock chip and a radiator. you got to fix it right there or you're yep. out of the race. You can patch it up. Instead you can of patch it up. It's all good to go. Yep, just like welding. Yeah, also as well with that, you've got a brake line fix. So uh, with your flux, you can fix a uh, brake line, stainless steel, steel, 
And then uh, your hop lock, heat absorption putty. So it yep. keeps you from getting burned, number one, as well as keeps the heat from traveling. So uh, it's really, uh, really nice. I've used this not even to fix anything. So it's, that stuff works <laughs> it's, so good, man. Listen, it's easy. It's uh, It straps in nicely so that you uh, have everything you need in one little place, and you don't have to carry a big bag in it's the It's like a uh, first truck. aid uh, kit for your vehicle. Yeah, chase trucks have it as well so that, uh, you know, if they need to make a fix on the fly, they can get it done and get it done quick and get you back in the race. Dude, those things are so cool. All right, so it's at Sider. Weld on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, solderweld.com. Awesome. All right. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Yeah, welcome back. Episode 83 of the Dirt Life Show is uh, halfway done, man. We're going to dip into uh, Jacob Peter's story as much as we can here uh, for the last portion of the show. I do want to say thank you very much to all these guys at uh, Four Wheel Parts and Temecula for allowing us to come in and uh, we'll call it invade their privacy, man. They let us sit up in the middle of the store. You can see all the fantastic stuff they got going on back here. They've been helping customers this whole time. Cool videos playing. They obviously got uh, an awesome shop here with tons and tons of cool products. I even got to check out some of them. Um, I was talking to a guy about a worn winch earlier. That was kind of cool. And, uh, man, I've never done any rock crawling, but those winches seem like they're awesome. I try, I'm trying to convince my mom to take me and let I, me crawl. She's I thought like, you were going to destroy car. Dude, I thought you were going to tell me I was trying to convince my mom to put a worn winch on the golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, too. We, we would need it. She's gotten stuck a few times. Hey, so, oh, here we go. Now you're putting mom, like, dropping one on your mom? She's no. gotten it stuck a couple times? No, we've gotten it stuck. Oh. We need a winch for okay. it the sounded like you, washes. It sounded like you were saying your mom's gotten it stuck a couple times. She she drives perfectly, Caden. You know that, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so before we get into uh, Jacob's story, we know that he already been to the desert and stuff, but um, Jacob, do you have any funny stories about Caden? Like anything where he's hmm. like, because you just said that you fell in the water. Like, has Caden ever biffed it around you? Oh, I've biffed it plenty of times. <laughs> Jacob, do you remember any of the times? I don't. Or has he spilled soda all over himself? Because that happened to me the other day. <laughs> he's done that a few times. <laughs> a few times. Um, do you have any funny stories about when uh, you guys are battling at the races or anything like that? Or maybe it's a, not even a funny story. Maybe it's an interesting story. At one of the races... It was actually, I was right behind him. The track split into do two different lanes. Mm -hmm. Kaden was the only person that took the split lane. I come up, it closes, and Kaden and I collide. What? And I, from my view, it looked like he went flying off the track. I thought that I had just taken him out of the race. Whoa. Yeah, we, we got, we banged Dirge pretty hard that time. Dude, was it scary? No, not really. I just thought that I took him out of the race. Did you see him after that, or you thought he was gone? No, I saw him after that. Oh, okay. So you saw him on course after that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank goodness, then. You were probably like, what? Yeah, I, we both came in. I'm like, woo. I sort of like, I slid really hard. My power string went out and stuff. It like wouldn't reset or anything. So I'm like, what's going on? Now that you had that happen one time, what's the like next thing that you do? Uh, like if you're faced with that same, uh, what do you call it, Y section again? Are you taking the same line? Are you going to pin it harder so that, that doesn't happen again? Or, like, what's the deal? I'd probably stay on the main line because everyone is in, like, a tight pack. So if you were to, one, if you were to go off, the guy behind you is just going to zoom to the guy that you were behind. Oh. And now you're not going to be able to get back in. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, I was just trying to take the split to see if I can, like, cut them off a little bit yeah. on the inside because we're all in a straight line and there's no passing. So if And then there's split lanes, so I was like, i got to take some chances right now. I like that for that attitude, though. That's a pretty good one. So, Jacob, if you're saying if you're taking the split lane, you got to go hammer down. Yeah, you got to try to you got to try to get to the end of the Y before the guy behind you reaches the guy that you were behind. Yeah, exactly. Um, we had a couple com more comments come in and said uh, Rusty Baptist said uncrustables, grape or strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> you're going. What about you, Jacob? Grape. You're going grape. Yeah. Oh, so Caden strawberry and you're grape. Yeah. Dude, I like it. This is pretty good here. It's like, uh, what do they call it, yin and yang? Um, okay, and then uh, Tyrone said, who is your biggest inspiration in racing? So let's let Jacob answer that first. I'd have to say Seth Quintero. Seth Quintero? Yeah. He's your guy? Yeah. I've pitted for him a few times. I just think that it's awesome that he got, that he was sponsored by Red Bull as soon as he turned the age of 16. 
Yeah, he actually got uh, that relationship started a little earlier than that, but it's pretty cool, right? Because yeah. it just goes to show that uh, uh, hard work can pay off because we're just racing little side-by-sides here, right? Like we're not NBA players yet, but he's already making a name for himself in the sport that he loves. Don't you think that's cool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, who's your hero then, kid? I kind of got two. So Andy McMillan, he always comes with those good quotes like uh, – it's there's some really good ones that like I write on my walls and stuff to like get in my like have pictures on my walls that I just keep in my head and I make sure I read them before I get out of my room. Yeah. And it's just a reminder like there's one uh there's one great prep or uh, something preparation leads to success. Yeah. And it was like there's some really good ones and then Seth Quintero he's a big inspiration because. He d- he's not a high-dollar guy. He doesn't have a ton of money to get all these fancy tools and stuff. But he gets the job done. He's in the top pack. He's yep. he's competing ju- just as much as everyone else does. Like, he really shows that money doesn't matter in the in the industry. Like, hard work pays hard off. Hard work right? pays off. And he's not. He doesn't have crazy pit trucks like some of the uh, fancy guys. And um. And he gets the job done. They get it done, and he's in the top pack. Last year, he got the championship. I remember everyone talking about Seth's got a huge lead, like a huge lead. And um, and it's just an Im- inspiration of letting you know that money doesn't matter. No matter, like, if you're, like, super rich or you're not broke, but, like, don't have the money that everyone else does. Like, right. it's an inspiration for that. Well, one of the things that I think you're you're – I'm trying to follow along with your what you're saying here is that hard work pays off, right? But when you're talking about all of the racing situations that you guys have been in or Mikey or Johnny have been in this weekend, like you figure out a way to get the job done, right? Yeah. Whether it's in the pits, whether it's preparation, whether it's not having money, whether it's going faster, like as a driver, there's all of these things that go into a race program. And Jacob, you probably understand now, some of it now, like since you're so young, but do, you realize that all of these things make it so that you can be a winner, not just driving fast? Yeah. Like, you got to make sure that your car is ready and that it didn't just sit in the garage for the whole time since your last race. Yeah, exactly. So, what's going to, like, maybe you can go along with the, that same topic. And then, so, um, take us through the steps that happen when you're preparing for a race and then maybe all the way up until the day you get back. So, I'm talking about, like, Tightening bolts, torquing things, getting your seat belts ready, checking them, getting your gear cleaned, and then all of a sudden, like when you're all the way done, you come home and that night you wash the race car, or the next day you wash the race car. Like, what are the steps that you go through? All right, so I take out the air filter, mm-hmm. put a brand new one in, clean the one that I took out. I change the belt, check all the oil, make sure it's still good. Then I torque all the tires make sure that the pressure is still okay Mm -hmm. then i get i pack all my gear you got to wash it first right from the next from the previous race yeah we actually we send it off to a dry cleaner and so oh that way you get that way your outfit stays nice and crispy yeah nice and then i pack all my gear and then we just get a cooler put us some drinks and some food yep get some snacks load it up all in the car load the car up and then we're we get to the race. And then when we get back home, you wash I wash the car the day that I get home. Yeah. Or the day after if it's like really late. Well, even if it's really late, I sometimes still wash <laughs> the car. Oh, there you go, dude. I like your style. And then we repeat the process the next race. Right on. And then so what about like maybe when you're driving home? Because there's one crucial thing that I think you missed. And when you're driving home, do you talk with your family about uh, how good you did at the races? Maybe how bad you did at the races? What you can improve on? Those types of things when you're on the way home? Uh, I talk with my dad about that. Okay. What kind of discussions do you have or have you had with your dad? Like maybe you could tell us what you guys talked about last time that you came home from the races. Um. When we're coming home from the races, I tell them how the car felt and if we needed to change anything. And I tell them how the track handled the car, or how the car handled the track. Oh, really? So you're learning all of that, too. So, like, what kind of feedback can you give your dad? Do you say um, it was oversteering, understeering, it uh, didn't have as much throttle response? Like, what are the, some of the things that you can feel now? 
Uh, I can feel if uh, I have my shocks like way too soft or way too stiff. Mm -hmm. And you would know which like rebound to adjust or compression to adjust, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Nice, dude. That's super cool. You know, most kids can't do that. That's pretty badass that you can do that, man. You should be, do you, what about like tire pressure? Uh, every time we go to a race, I always check the tire pressure. I go around asking everybody what they're putting their tire pressure at. Nice. And then I just, in between all of theirs, put Get my. Get the inside secrets. Yes. That's what pays to be a young kid, because if I walked around asking tire pressure, they would give me the wrong answer right away. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to go do something that's totally wacky. Yeah, I'm running 30. Yep, exactly. Dude, really good. There's a lot of grip in it. Oh, really? No, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, thanks for, like, fluffing me, Caden. Because I would never put 30 pounds of air. But although, you know what? In short course, I ran 27 pounds one race because I needed that much slide. Because I was getting too much traction, yeah. So it was pretty crazy how much you would actually change. But uh, the nice part about it is is that you guys are learning at a younger age than what I did. So I had to kind of learn quickly when I was doing the side-by-side -side stuff. But now you guys are learning it um, as you go through the through the ranks, we'll call it. And uh, so by the time you guys get to, uh, let's call it Seth Quintero's age, you guys are going to know a lot, man, because that's a, a good amount of time. What is Seth, uh, 19, 20 now? Uh, I think he... Oh, maybe 18? I but think 18, 19. Yeah, I 18, think he's 18 because he had to be that... That yeah, because he couldn't race the car the first year he had a watch. Yeah, exactly. And this year he was able. So to. you guys are gonna have uh, a good uh, a good understanding of how things work when you become his age as well. So, um, man, that's cool that you that you're able to do that with your dad when you guys are coming home from the races. What are the what does your sisters and your mom talk about coming home from the races? Mm, they uh, they don't go to most of my races because my sisters do cheer and most of my races land on their cheer competitions. Oh, that's what happens, man. That same thing happened with my family, too. My sister had a lot of stuff going on, so my mom had to help her out, too. But that's cool that you guys have a family that can do both, right? Yeah. That's pretty neat. Do you like spending time with your sisters? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all mad over there right now. I know, right? Uh, well, Caden, I saw that you were doing some fun stuff with your sister the other day, making churros. That looked like... Oh, I was, yeah, the churros are fun. I know. I was so jealous, dude. The oil wasn't fun. The oil just pops all over your hands like... Get out of here. <laughs> Did you take it like a race program and you're like, next time we got to get a different oil that doesn't boil over. We got to turn the heat down. Like you're like. I kind of took it like that. I said we needed more oil on it. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they they go fast. They go really fast. Like you like put it in. It's like done. You're like, well, what happened? Nice. Not only is Caden over here uh, doing ra uh, side by side racing, wrecking golf carts, but he can make churros with his sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We need uh, to come out with like, a uh, golf cart video. That okay, so let's just pretend that you don't have a race like on the weekend and your family and you like, do you go to the cheer competitions and like hang out and just, like get to watch your sisters or no? Yeah, if I don't have a race, we go to their competitions. Nice, dude. That's cool. Full family support, just like they would do if you were uh, in the pits or in, in broken down somewhere in the in the desert, right? Yeah. That's so cool, man. Well, those types of family values, like I said before, those types of family values are very important, and you'll appreciate those as you guys grow older. Um, and definitely take advantage of all these MacGyver tricks that your dad's doing because those are going to help you out for sure. Yeah. There's going to be some point when you're broken down on the side of the freeway and you're going to have to fix your car and yeah, you're going to be like, oh. I'm down a branch and putting it there for the shot. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> I remember my dad did this one time. That's going to be pretty cool. Let's try it. <laughs> um, so when did you actually start racing, Jacob? I started racing you quads said in 2012. Yeah, you said 2012, right? And... How long did that quad, uh, I don't know, quad, quad racing last for? Uh, I'm still doing quad racing. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you were only doing side-by-sides. No, I race uh, 250. Oh, really? Dude, that's pretty cool, man. So what? when do you get to, you do it at works? Yeah. Really? It's normally before my race. And since I don't practice, I normally use my quad run as my practice. Yeah, he, Dude. he rips. I watched him. That's he actually rips. a great idea because then he gets to like know. And you're saying, is it a week too. before or is it the same weekend? Usually? No, it's the same weekend. Oh, dang. So you get a little bit more track time than everybody else. Yeah. Dude, Caden, are you going to start riding quads? I wanted it. They look really, really fun. Really? Yeah. They look a lot of fun, but it's not in the budget. Yeah, I feel you, though, especially if uh, uh, I'm not going to give away any secrets, but anytime you want to start, like, a uh, furthering your program, then uh, you got to save your budget for that. Yeah. So what's the uh, 
what's the plan then for you, Jacob? Is to keep racing the 250 and then keep raising your racing your RS1 for the next couple of years, or what's the, like? Yeah, I think we're gonna keep doing that. As then I think next year we're gonna do a few more desert races. Dang, that'll be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Have you raced a desert race before, other than UTV Worlds? Uh, no, I think the UTV Worlds was the only one that I did. Did you like it? We did. Um, we did Parker, which was thirteen miles. Wait, which one? Not the this last Parker. No, it was a I think two Parkers before that. Oh, okay. It was but fun. It was a thirteen mile loop. And how was that? You like that, Jacob? Yeah, I think I forget what car it was in. Hey, you were in RS1 because I was be I was behind him. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally tapped him, and the arm broke. On and your then, car? Yeah, and I did like a, I, it like spun out over what I was scared. Yeah, I'm getting like a common theme here. Like Caden's always trying to like get ram into you, be on the side of you, like all over the place. And he's like all up in your grill when you're racing, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's always trying to get around. <laughs> oh, here we go. So that means you're starting first, just like you did in the. Are you smarter than the third grader? Hey, besides whenever you hit me, I was in front and I took a split lane and you came right inside. Woo. Ooh -wee. I like the competition vibe over oh, here. It's, this fun. Is, it's pretty good, huh? Yeah, we go hard at the races. That's cool. Hard. It's and you guys have always been in the same class? Um let's let Jacob answer. Yeah, we have always been in the same class since we one seventy, five seventy, two fifty. Two fifty is then now our response. Dang, that's pretty cool, right? So far, what's your favorite car that you've driven? Aside from the one you're driving now, because I know you guys like the bigger cars, but. Because those 170s look pretty awesome, dude. Like, they look fun. They look fun, but once you're in them, they're pretty rough. Are they? Because there's no suspension? Yeah, it kind of. The car just rocks side to side, so your entire body's just slamming. So that's actually exactly what a good short course setup is? Yeah. <laughs> when my we. When we raced short course, that's exactly how it was. It was like basically like having no shocks. All you do is just go into a turn and throw the car sideways. Yeah, um, my favorite car was probably my stock car because uh, that car was competitive. Like we had. What's the stock car? What do you mean? Uh, it was just 170 stock. Oh, and okay. So it wasn't like all like crazy. It wasn't <laughs> modded and crazy and stuff, but it was a competitive car, and that class was fun because you can all be right next to each other, and that's when weight wasn't a factor. But now weight's like. Instead of metal panels, it's carbon fiber. So yeah. Ex now now it's like a money game for those small cars. I know, man. So one of my buddies, uh, Brian Forrester, his son Tatum Forrester, races, uh, I think he does some works racing, and he does like AZOP and stuff like that. Um, but he was telling me, he's like, man, it's like it's harder than like racing a full-on uh, pro-level turbo car because there's so many little things that they do to these 170s now. Yeah, some of them sell for more than just a stock. Tur I think I know of one that sold for 50 or they, 50? they bought for 50. There's no way I would ever pay that much for it, my kid yeah, to race 170. There's no way, that's man. When, that's whenever it started getting out of hand. Because once they knew that they bought it, everyone's like, rank up the price. And then you're like, you can't buy too much. Don't you think that's messed up, Jacob? Yeah, 50 for a little 170? You might, I might as well just buy might a desert well car. Yeah. I was thinking like 10 grand was too expensive for a 170, let alone oh, 50 grand. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, that's nuts. That's nothing now. Uh, so Tyrone Robinson, uh, uh, yeah, Crystal Chipman commented and said prep, prep wins races. So it's a good thing that you're prepping your car so much, Jacob. Uh, and then Tyrone Robinson commented and said, what's your favorite wrenching or hanging out with friends? Or maybe doing both. Like, cause you, you and your guys, your friends wrench on each other's cars, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite? Hmm. I feel like wrenching is pretty fun. Like a lot of times, you learn a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. My favorite is whenever you're like helping like the pros and stuff, cause then you see all their little techniques, and then you're like, all right, now I know. Now I do it to my car. My car's gonna run better. Oh, and, like, dude, that's. I like, I like take notes whenever I'm helping out some of the pros, like with their cars. I'm, like, taking notes, like, oh, they're doing this different than me, and it seems to work a little bit better for them. Yeah. So then I apply that, and then it's helping out my car. And since I've done that, my car my car prep has improved a ton. Yeah, not to mention your knowledge of the car prep, too. Yeah. Have you done stuff like that as well, Jacob? Uh, I've pitted for Cess a few times. And what about, like, guys like uh, Ronnie or RJ? Have you helped them? Uh, No. Because those guys gave you a lot of tips. I'm sure you've been around them a couple times, Caden. Yeah, um, we actually, for my birthday one time, I stopped at their shop, and we hung out with them for a little bit. I rode one of their cooler quad things. They're so fun. Nice. But you, like, go around, and you're like, ah! <laughs> have you ever rode a cooler quad? I have not. 
Dude. They're, they're the funnest things ever. I haven't either. Maybe we need to get uh, your uh, MacGyver over here, your dad, to be able to build us a cooler quad. I see a four-wheel parts uh, uh, cooler over there. Maybe we could have them uh, donate that. We just need to get some wheels and some uh, casters and a little bit of mo motor, and we could throw it on there. That'd be perfect. I kind of want ours to be eco-friendly, so maybe we get a, like a big old electric motor. What do you think, Jacob? Definitely. Think your dad could whip something up for us? Probably could. <laughs> Throw a Tesla motor in the back. She's doing it. Ah! Hey, would you help him build it? Yeah. Nice, dude. That'll be a good project. Uh, so I want to have a, uh, a trophy, in quotes, um, for Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader? Oh, no. And so maybe what we could do is we could have four-wheel parts donate the cooler, your dad donate the labor, we'll find a motor, <laughs> and then uh, PRP can sponsor it. Because Aaron Wedeking wanted to get on a championship uh, trophy thing for Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader. I think that would be pretty sick. Yeah, I need to step in my game. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to go study right as soon as I get home. <laughs> More studying just because yeah. you want to win a, a, a motorized cool. cooler. Yeah. What if the, the electric one beats the Anderson's gas-powered ones? And the electric one's beating it. Yeah, dude. Here we go. Uh, okay, so... I thought you raced dirt bikes as well. I I did race dirt bikes for a little bit until uh, I raced them until works separated them from to a different weekend than the cars. And you just were over it, or you just didn't want to have to go two weekends in a row. Well, it was just harder for us to be able to go two weekends in a row, so I that's why we we that's why we switched over to the quad more. Mm. That makes a lot of sense because then you get to more track time or the same amount of track time still then, right? Yeah, because that used to be the – the dirt bike used to be my go see the track before the car. I feel like quad is a little bit closer to the side-by-side, -side though, so it probably prepares you a little bit better, like line choice and stuff. Yeah, because the quad is definitely wider than a dirt bike, and they go on the exact same track. Yeah, so that probably prepares you a little bit. Does the quad tire you out? Because that's a lot of uh, – uh, I don't know. A lot to handle with their arms. Some of the tracks definitely tired me out. What was the most tiring one? Like Havasu looks like it'd be gnarly on a quad. Havasu's rough. Yeah. It looks like on a quad it would be so gnarly. What about Mesquite? That, that track Is Mesquite tiring. gnarly on a quad? Yeah, it was. It's gnarly in a car, so I can't imagine a quad. Well, it's the day before, though, right? Like you said. So it's not quite as rough? Or what do you think? I think it's the same day. It's oh, it's the same day. Yeah, it's, be, it's right before, actually. Oh, okay, it's so like it's pretty much the same track then. Yeah. Dang, so aren't you tired when you get in the car then? Well, I get a little bit of break, so. You have enough time to eat a sandwich? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> the sandwich is the most important part of the whole day. Don't you guys know this? Yeah. Uh, okay, so you go to the works races, and uh, we were talking about, like, getting your car prepared, but you got to prepare a quad, too. Yeah, I just, I got to clean that thing, make sure, I got to check the tire pressure in that. One of the tires is actually pretty flat, and we oh, haven't crap. fixed it. So every single race, we gotta pump it up. That's okay though. You gotta learn how to pump it up. Yeah, you mm. just gotta set a tire pressure over, and then you're good at the line. <laughs> Here we go. Look, see, he's already thinking of ways to make sure he finishes the race. That's the way to think, though. Um, which do you like doing better, the quad or the razor? Definitely the razor. Yeah, races are their side by sides are so fun. Every time so I talk to like all these people that are like, "Oh my god, dude, a dirt bike is so badass. Why are you riding a side by side?" I'm like, "Dude, I'll do both. Like, I like <laughs> both of them. But a side by side until you've driven one or raced one, like you don't get the full enjoyment out of it. Would you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. yeah like once you, it's like, it's an addiction. Like once you drive it once, you like, just keep on going. Like, yeah, for real, not right? Stop. I feel like the same way. And then uh, like. When you compare the dirt bike or a quad or a side-by-side, -side, are you still picking the side-by-side -side or is a dirt bike more fun? No, I'm still picking the side-by-side. -side. Nice, dude. That's cool, man. So that means that you're pretty uh, focused on getting to be a professional driver in a side-by-side -side then, yeah? Yeah. That's really cool. So what are your, like, milestone goals that you have? I usually ask people what your short-term goals are, like maybe a goal for the rest of this year and then uh, what your goals are in, like, five years. Where do you want to be in five years? So maybe answer what's the goals for the rest of the year first. Goals for the rest of the year are try to do the best that I can in all my races and try to win the, uh, the world championship this year. Oh, cool. So you are going to race the UTV world championship then? Yeah. Nice. Okay. And then where do you, like, see yourself uh, in your racing program in about five years from now? I know it's difficult to answer because it's a long ways away, but 
Like you got to have those those goals because if you if you set like I told Caden this before, if you set milestone goals like little goals, then you can achieve them really easily. You can what it's it's called like what did my dad say? Um, eating the elephant one bite at a time. So you can't eat an elephant in one meal, right? It's too big. Yeah. But if you eat them one bite at a time, it'll take you let's just say five years, but you can get it done, right? Yeah. So you have some goals that you're gonna do for the rest of the year. It sounds like you're on track, and then. After that, you want to have goals for the next year, right? It's like, okay, I want to win the championship since I did so well in these races. And then the next goal is, like, I want to get up to being uh, in the uh, pro turbo class. And then I want to get top fives. And then I want to get top threes. And then I want to get wins. And then the next year after that, you're already at your fourth year. Now you're in a, a turbo car. And then you want to win the championship. And then after that, you want to graduate to another level and be um, Polaris's top factory athlete, like those types of things. So do you ever think about that? Uh, I've thought about, thought about how the racing's going to be in a few years when I'm probably in a bigger car. What do you think? Like what's some of the stuff that crosses your mind? Probably what type of car I'm racing and what type of races I'll be in. Do you have anything like that you also go on, like uh, if you're going to be stronger as an athlete, um, if you're going to uh, pursue anything else in school or education or how it's going to affect your racing or anything like that? No. No, you just want to be a racer? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. But you always have to have a backup plan too, right? Yeah. Uh, so I do think it's awesome that you're so focused on it. What do you think you're going to be in two years then? Like, what class do you think you're going to be racing? Probably Pro 1000s. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, right? And yeah. then normally aspirated, and then maybe the year after that, maybe work up into a turbo car? Yeah. Dang, that would be pretty sweet. And who knows, man? There might be a company coming out with a new vehicle, too. And that new vehicle might be, like, a total new class, right? Yeah. So that would be pretty cool. Um well, I think it's cool that you have all these goals, and I think it's really important that no matter what, whenever you're uh, doing things in life, whether it's racing, whether it's your schoolwork, whether it's uh, helping out your friends or anything, you always be able to give uh, those milestones and those goals because those are always, always going to be helpful no matter where you look at it. Because like your dad, where did he learn or think of those things to be able to repair those cars? Well, who knows? Somewhere in his life, those things came into play, right? And he thought of these creative ways to fix these things. And now you're going to be able to do the same thing because you're learning all these things. And then in two years from now, you're going to have all of that knowledge in your pocket when you go to race these pro NA cars. It's going to be pretty sweet, don't you think? Definitely. I think it'll be pretty cool, man, because you guys are going to be so much further ahead in two years. Like, Caden, I don't know what you think. Um, I definitely have a lot of goals for the future, like – um, definitely want to move to different stuff. I want to try out different types of racing. Maybe hop, like do lawnmowers, lawnmower racing, golf cart racing. That's yep. what I was thinking. <laughs> um, was definitely thinking to try out some like do like a few cart races, like try out like different areas of racing. I I might end up it like eventually if I if I get on that path. I eventually if if it's like the path I want to go which I don't know yet, um, NASCAR might be a er area where I want to guide to and, like, start getting to that level. Um, but I definitely am thinking about that and trying to improve that way. But I'm trying to think of, like, different stuff. Like, if I do off-road, I want to go to fab school. I want to go to different sc uh, schools and college and stuff and then, like, work somewhere and eventually start my own, like, prepping business where I prep cars and stuff like that. For example, RJ, he preps a few cars every once in a while, but then he focuses on his races and he yep. goes like to different areas. But he makes the money he wants to make. Yeah. Make and, and um, he also uses it as a tool to learn. Yeah, and he does a lot of media, and I that's one of my goals to do. But like I gotta like make sure I have backups because if I don't have backups, then whenever it gets to that time, I'm just stuck. I'm I don't know where to go. You always want a backup. I'm just plan, lost. Man. Yeah. So you gotta like. Make sure you're ready for the head plan yeah, while you're doing it right now. I agree 100%. We had a couple comments come in. Uh, Tyrone said, what's your favorite place to race? 
So, Jacob, can you tell me what your favorite place to race is first? <laughs> Rusty said, Dad has been breaking stuff his whole life. <laughs> so, is that true? Your dad breaks a lot of stuff? Does that mean he goes hard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime he's in a car, he definitely pushes it as hard as he can. He has a really strong right foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good, though, because that means he's going to know how to fix it. Especially at KOH. Yeah. Pretty do you know what your KOH. favorite place to r race is at or what your favorite track is? That Taft one looks pretty badass, man. I got to admit. I want to go there one of these days. Or maybe it's a desert race that you haven't been to. Uh, Adam Fitz chimed in as well, and he said, options are endless at your age, guys. Push hard in all aspects, family, school, racing, etc. It pays off. Set a goal and don't look back. So I couldn't agree more with that statement. And the, the really cool part about that statement is it, it gives a lot of perspective when you are at your guys' young age. Um, when I was young, all I wanted to do was race dirt bikes. That's it. I only had one goal, and that was to become a professional dirt bike racer. I had the ability to be able to go out and do things uh, on a limited budget, and we would make money at certain races and things like that, but um, I ended up getting hurt. And when I got hurt, I didn't really have a backup plan. I was always smart in school, and I had good grades and things like that, but when, uh, when I got hurt, it was like, oh, crap, what am I going to do now? And it ended up being that I went to college, and I got a computer science degree. And that made me have a whole different path in life. But I used every single thing that I learned in racing, all the milestones, goals, and all the things that we're talking about now, and just like Adam's saying, gave, making sure that you're paying attention to all that stuff. Because all of that, when I was going to school, I hated the school. Like, I didn't want to go to school ever. And uh, to get my degree, I went to school 12 hours a day, every day, including summer, even Saturdays and Sundays, so that I could go and get it done as quickly as possible. So instead of going for four years, I went for two and a half and got it done and then got to work. So it was a lot easier because I used all the stuff that I learned in dirt bikes by getting things done quickly and working hard, and it made a huge difference in my life after that. So I couldn't agree more with what Adam's saying, man. You got No matter what you do, put all your effort into it because it's really important that you show, um, man, we only get one life to live, right? Yeah. Make so, it good. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, actually, you know what I was going to ask you? What's some of the st stuff that you like doing most in school? Math is one of my favorite subjects. Can and you tell that first question? I know, and he's a quick stress. thinker, too. Um, all right, let's see if we could get a question answered real quick. What's uh, 100 plus 50? 150. Oh, you guys are good. Uh, how about 26 plus 34? Ooh, oh, got God. you with the oh. number on the end of it, huh? 62. 60. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he close though. Jacob thought about it for a second, but he was he got it. Uh, He's giving me a chance. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Mandel said, "What about the side cart? What side cart? What is? I don't oh, know." Oh, I have a. Uh, I have to show you a photo. What is it? it? Is the Maybe you can explain it a little bit. So it's a bicycle with a custom attachment, and it it's a cart on the side for you to stand on. And hold, mom, can you pull up? A oh, kind of like a sidecar, like a motorcycle with a sidecar, so but it's a bicycle. Yeah, but it's a bicycle. Have and you rode on it, Jacob? I have rode on it. It's so fun. On the pedals or on the side? On the side. How gnarly was that? Well, Who's like driving or pedaling? Was it Caden? I think it was Deegan. Really? Oh, that's a scary driver. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pedal bike then, or is it got a like gas? It's a, it's a pedal Pe bike. Oh, okay. So was that like crazy because he was going so fast, or it wasn't that like gnarly? Well, you can't really go that fast when you got two people on him. Oh, so it's too heavy. But is he like going like squirrely? Yeah, he's it, making it the squirrely. cart. He's making the cart go up in the air. Oh, he's trying to throw you off then, the, huh? The funnest part is whenever you find a hill and he goes fast, you can't down it. You're going so fast, but you got to lean back because if you catch a rock, it leans forward so fast. Oh, yeah. my God, so scary. Tyrone actually had some good advice as well, too. Is He's saying that uh, um, push hard, and uh, but still have fun. Uh, do not put a ton of pressure on yourself. So um, this is one of the lessons that I've talked to somebody recently about. Um, when you make a mistake, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. So one of the qualities that I've always seen – uh, that champion dirt bike racers or champion off-road racers like Rob McCacken or RJ Anderson or even Seth Cantero, what they do is they have the ability to forget about what just happened 
and move forward in their brain positively. So if you make a mistake on course, like let's just say you blow out a turn or you hit a jump wrong and you case it or something, once that happens, the best racers don't even think about it. They think about what the next corner has to offer them so they can make up the time that they just lost and they can move forward with it very quickly. So those things are really, really important, not just in racing, in life. Because no matter what happens, you're driving home one day, you got 30 minutes in dang California traffic, right? Yeah. There's going to be somebody that cuts you off. There's going to be somebody that gets mad at you. But the quicker you can forget about that and turn your brain off, the better your life's going to be because you're going to be thinking about a totally different positive thing in your life, right? Yeah, something wrong happens and you just got to make it good. Have either of you guys made a mistake on track that uh, bothered you while you were racing? Always. And what I'm trying to figure out right now is I'm trying to teach myself short-term memory loss. Uh, happened? Okay. We can do it better next time. Clear that. Let's do Let's do good. Let's try making that time back. Yeah, just like delete it from your brain yeah, and just keep going, and right? Yeah, and I just uh, have been struggling with that lately and I need to get back like forgetting about what happened there. I, I need to learn from my mistakes. Yeah, and you can forget about it like and just race it during the race and then maybe at the end of the race be like, you know what? I remember that. It's kind of bothering me. So I'm going to put a little bit of effort into it and go, you know what? This is what I'm going to do to fix it maybe during the week after that race or whatever. And you blew out a turn. You're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to soften my suspension a little bit. I'm going to make it so that I hit the brakes just a millisecond before that turn next time. And then you fix it, and then you're good for the next race, right? Yeah. You just got to learn from your mistakes. And Have you done anything like what Caden's talking about, Jacob? Well, uh during some of my races, I get upset because uh, my when my powered steering goes out, my four-wheel drive switch is actually too close to it. So every time I my powered steering goes out and I go to turn it on and back or off and back on, mm-hmm. I end up switching my car into two-wheel drive. Oh, because of the buttons. And sometimes it takes me longer than I would like it for for me to notice it. Yeah, sometimes it makes a big difference when you can notice it quicker, right? Um, so maybe one of the things to think about then is to talk with your dad about uh, relocating that power steering switch or, excuse me, the uh, four-wheel drive switch. Yeah, we were we were thinking about removing it. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, right? So now you're going to have full-time four-wheel drive. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, that's funny because uh, I always used to forget to put my car in four-wheel drive, and I asked one of my fellow racers uh, named Jake Ubetta, by the way, and uh, he told me, he goes, dude, I used to always forget, George. He goes, now, after I'm done washing the car at home, I put it in four-wheel drive, and I put a piece of tape on it so that it never changes over the whole weekend. I'm like, dude, you're a freaking genius. Yeah, genius. Yeah, like, what the heck was I doing this whole time? Like, because I would load up in two-wheel drive. Like, I'm always, like, all worried about it. He's like, no, dude, who cares? Just put a piece of tape on it and leave it, like, so that you don't make the mistake again. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you have any tricks like that? Has your dad or, or anybody ever, or any other racers taught you some stuff like that so you remember to do something? There's all kinds of cool stuff that you've probably learned that you don't even remember now, huh? It's hard to remember. Yeah, it is, right? One thing uh, I learned over the time is to make sure your steering wheel's on because I've had issues <laughs> where I'm midair with my steering wheel in the air. I'm like, this is not good. How did you pull that off? You just put your steering wheel back on? Uh... Well, one time at Lucas, I couldn't get it on fast enough, and I hit a wall. Ooh. And then we actually have a photo of me midair with the steering wheel above my head. Dude, I'm I... I'm just holding on, looking straight, I'm like, this is not good. I have, a pretty, not good. I have a pretty story, that, or a similar story to that. Do you have any stories where you lost your steering wheel, Jacob? I think my steering wheel has come off, but it was at the start line. I hadn't started the race yet. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank God, man. <laughs> you're, tra- you're the only it's one being terrible. safe over here. Uh, so I was actually at a Lucas race at Wild Horse Pass, and um, I was passing for the lead. Uh, and in this case, it was pretty important that I passed quickly for the lead because it was like on the first or second lap. And I was going around the last turn right before you get the high-speed table. And yeah. thank God it was around the last turn. But um, the stem on the steering column broke off and the steering wheel fell in my lap. There was like a little tiny nub that was still sticking out, and because I was headed straight towards the wall because I was in mid-turn, I was like, oh, crap, man, I'm going to go into this wall so hard. And so I grabbed the, the, I threw the steering wheel to the side, and I grabbed the column with both of my hands and tried to turn it, and I held it in, in place and just barely bumped into the wall because I had like a death grip lock on the steering column. It was... Oh. 
It was so crazy, man. Yeah, I remember I just hit it dead on because it came off. I was trying to get back on, but it was just slipping. Yeah. And I couldn't get it because I had the steering wheel angled. And she went, Whoo. So what did you do, pull over and then just put it back on? Yeah, it was a yellow flag, and I got it back on. I got back to the pack. and. Nice, dude. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I did too good that race, but. Yeah, but still. You yeah. Fi- you fixed it and got back out there. That's pretty rad, dude. Yeah, but I've had a few issues of steering wheels. And Uh-oh. Now I'm like, I don't want a quick release. I'm over this. <laughs> I stopped using quick releases after that, too. So yeah. I don't disagree with your mentality on that. Um, what's one of the most interesting things that's happened to you at a race before, Jacob? Have you had any crazy battles or any, like, rollovers or anything like that? I think the only massive, like, roll that I had was when I crashed Mikey's car going 90. <laughs> that was it pretty gnarly. Maybe you could explain that. Like, how many times did you flip? Hard to remember. I think it was <laughs> I think it was a few that's times. That's the audio clip. Okay, that's the audio clip for the episode. Don't you think, Caden? Yeah. How many times did you flip? That's hard to remember. <laughs> I don't, I don't like flipping. <laughs> oh, I don't like flipping either, but that was hilarious. So um, so you don't remember how many times you flipped, but you probably remember, like, where you landed, right? Yeah, I landed, like, probably, like, two feet away from the track, car Oof. upside down, missing one tire, the rest of the arms bent in. That's nice. Man, that's crazy. So did you? what did you learn from that? How about that? Don't go full speed when you can't see where you're going. <laughs> That's another great audio clip, too. I'm going to have to um, send this to Dustin Jones. So Dustin Jones is a Can-Am racer. You probably know him, the Battle Axe. And, uh, Mr. He, Mullet. Yeah, Mr. Mullet. He's always, uh, dude, we could get Mikey and uh, K- uh, Casey to That's do mullet. That's where Casey started his mullet. He oh, got really? a cut from Dustin at uh, YouTube. Or but Rob. now they're all surfer dudes. Now they're all super, yeah. Um, so he said it's Dustin. Dustin's got that fresh one. Yeah, Dustin's got the fresh one, fresh cut all the time. But anyway, so he um, he has this, like, uncanny vision through dust. Like, he can see really, really well in dust when most people can't. So I always ask him, I say, what can you teach other people? He's like, you can't. He's like, there's no way they'll ever be able to figure it out. You either have it or you don't. And then I started thinking about it, and I'm like, Maybe it's not that he can see in the dust. Maybe he can process the information with stuff that's going by in his peripheral vision, like you were talking, Caden, and understand how far away things are. Yeah, so he, I learned by the side of the track. If I see, there you like, go. kind of dive in a little bit, I know it's slowly going to turn. Yep. So then I just look at the side of the track, and then eventually I can't see, and then I'm good. But I keep my n- normal race pace and just look at the edge of the track, and I, that edge of the track tells me where to go. So... If Jacob doesn't really care about, like, going and doing these training or boxing or any of these, like, uh, really crazy body uh, exercises, maybe that's what he does to, like, prepare a little bit different. Maybe he gets his visual cortex and all of these different brain processing things really tuned in so that he can see better, like, when it does come to those situations. Yeah. That would be pretty sweet, don't you think? That would be like having a superpower, dude. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't end up crashing the car. That's what I mean, dude. You'd, <laughs> you'd be out there ripping. So, uh, and then Mikey wouldn't be all pissed at you. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey would still like you. <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty funny. Um, so going back to what we were talking about before, what you liked in school, how is school going since it's been so crazy these past year? Mm, school online is definitely definitely weird. You're not into it? You like going to school better? I like, I definitely like going to school better. Yeah. What do you, what do you usually do in school? Like you like going to math and you sometimes like science and social studies and all that or no? Well, you go to every single class. Right. But like you're like not into it. I just don't, I wouldn't prefer doing it online rather than just going in. Okay. How about this then? If you couldn't, if you couldn't be a side-by-side racer for the, or an off-road racer for the rest of your life, what kind of uh, job are you trying to get? If you're good at math and you like math, dude, you could be like some sort of professional. Like, math is so good. Yeah. Like, I was always good at math too, and that what was what made computer science so easy for me. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Have you ever thought about that? Like, what you would do with like those math smarts? I think about it, but I just can't figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Fabricate. Fabrication. Is That's a, lot a good of one. And you do you cars. like doing any of that fabrication stuff? You don't have to use nickels like your dad. You can use like <laughs> real pipes and stuff. No, you can weld instead of CPU. Yeah. I would like to be able to weld and take parts and 
build my own cage for my car. That'd be pretty sick to like build yourself a own, your own race car. Dang, that'd be crazy, right? You know who did that was Seth Quintero's co-driver. He built his own cage for a project at school. Yeah, Colby, I saw that. That was yeah, pretty that cool. Was, that was really, really cool. That was another thing that I had to learn, too. I never knew how to, like, in side-by-side -side racing, the UTV Wolfpack, those guys gave me my first car. But then after that, I built every single car after that. Really? Yeah, and That's I had really no cool. idea how to build those cars, but I did it kind of like your dad does, and I just figured it out and went away and did it the way that I thought was the best. That's really cool. Yeah, so it's cool cause that you guys have those same, like, thoughts and visions in your head because now, like, when you're going home from the races, like we were talking about with your dad, like, you'd be like, you know what? If the cage was a little bit lower, maybe I could have, like, got a little bit less drag or, you know, just, like, crazy things like that. Or if we had a little bit more of a rigid or a gusset right here in the suspension, it would have helped it steer a little bit better in that rut. Like, those things are super crucial, man, when yeah. you have a pro – professional racing program yeah one thing i definitely need to learn is shocks like shocks are one thing that it's hard to learn and you always can improve in them They're i can really definitely hard. agree with that what about you jacob because you sounded like you were getting pretty good at understanding how the shocks work yeah depending on depending on what race we're going to we actually lower and heighten the height of the car so the ride height yeah so anytime we're going to like the gbc races on the lucas track we lower it down. We're like a short course track. Like a more short course setup? Yeah. Do you, uh, are you able to tell, like, in the seat of your pants, the difference in how the car feels? Yeah. Which do you like better? You definitely like it lower to the ground. Yeah, because the center of gravity is lower. So there's where your math kicks in. You can see where the, uh, the what do you call it, um, the angles are. The distri yeah. distribution of yep. the Yep, and the way that it moves and stuff. Those are cool. That's cool that you guys are learning that stuff, man. Because yeah. that stuff takes a long time to learn, and most grown men don't un understand that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and so. we're still learning. It's not like we figured it out. It's we're, You can always improve in something. Like, yep. You think you can, like, the smartest man in the world might think he mastered it, but, like, really. Yep, and you that's can learn so much more in that day. That's exactly what Adam was saying when he said, uh, you know, set those goals and it pays off. Those goals don't and don't look back. Um, well, so your favorite, <coughs> sorry, your favorite subject in school is math. Does that mean that uh, you nail your math homework like super super quick and then you can do all your other homework after that or what? Uh, not as not not much faster because uh, I'm actually in an advanced math. Oh, look at him, dude! Whoa. So we're not asking any, are you smarter than a third grader questions that are math related to this guy. Yeah, we're, we're going history. Okay. Yeah, he's going to wax us. So um, have you guys done like, uh, uh, what do they call it, algebra and stuff like that yet or no? Yeah. Really? So are you pretty good at that? What's one of the hardest questions that you ever had to answer? Can you remember it? Because algebra, if you knew an algebra equation, I would blow my mind right now. That'd be super cool. It's not really, you can't really remember them. Yeah. It's just whatever the teacher gives you, and you can knock it out? Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so this is totally off the school subject. Oh. Does your family own a golf cart, Jacob? Yes. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh so do you guys take the golf cart to the races? No. It's a good idea. <laughs> Here really we go. Good idea. So I think uh, – <laughs> I think – <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of things about the golf cart situation, but I think one of the best things is, is that your family doesn't take it to the races, right? But the problem with that is now Caden's mom has to deal with all of you guys riding and crashing her golf cart. Yeah, I think I need to start prepping it like my race car. He's going to need a full prep job. Dude, it really does, right? Does yeah. it have big tires on it? No. <laughs> it just has regular tires? Yeah, we got to make sure that thing's low to the ground because I'm sure it'll flip if it's high. <laughs> <laughs> it's sure like a short well. course setup, short course golf cart setup. Yeah, like a Lucas setup. How wide. fast have you gone in Sarah's golf cart? As fast as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> wide open. Into a jump or just around the pits? All of the above. <laughs> I want to hear Jacob's story. Do you have any funny stories with the golf cart? <laughs> you do, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Pretty much every night we're at the races, we get as many people as we can on the back of that thing and pop a wheelie. Are you on the back or are you driving? No, I'm on the back. <laughs> Casey's normally the one driving. You guys don't want to get uh, in trouble from Sarah? <laughs> Man, you, and the, you guys in these golf carts, dude. Do you guys ever get in trouble? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
have you gotten in trouble on the golf cart, Jacob? I've only gotten yelled at by Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, these golf carts, I can tell you what, man. And the funny thing is, is Caden still picked me up. It still ran like a champ when he got me to go in it. Uh, what other hobbies do you usually have or do you like to do outside of racing? Like maybe RC cars, bicycle riding, what kind of stuff? Me and my friend Colin, we actually, we actually find spots to go build some BMX bike jumps. Really? Yeah. We're working like, uh, on one right now. Like how big are the jumps? Pretty big? Uh, we're working on one right now that we want to be like five feet. Dang, dude. That's a lot of shovel work, dude. It is. It really is. We used to do that when we were little, too. We had to build all of our, our own bicycle jumps because there wasn't tracks out by us. We lived way too far in the sticks. So we would spend, like, I don't know, two or three weeks building a track or jumps and stuff, and then we'd finally get to go ride it. And then right when you ride it, you're like, oh, we can make it bigger. And then you just keep building it and building it and building it. Like it's, huge. You're like, yeah. Oh and then it's, like, this massive course, right? Um, Dale Mitchell said, Jacob would be a good engineer. That's actually pretty, if you're good at math, you could do like CNC machining. Have you ever seen that? No. Like where they have those big old blocks of aluminum and they put them in those machines and they like crank out some crazy like spindle or something. Like, you know what Miles Cheek's dad, Chuck Cheek does? CMI. CMI, yeah. No. Have you ever seen any of those cool like spindles and hubs and stuff that he has? Yeah. Yeah. Like those come out of a square piece of aluminum. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So, um, Okay. Being an engineer would be a pretty cool thing to do, man. Um, so just the bicycle riding, or do you have other hobbies? Uh, I like to go golf. Really? Yeah. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Are you good at golfing? Yeah. Really? Like you got the good form and everything? Well. That's official. I can't aim pretty well, but I can hit it pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to focus on where you're going to put it, and then you're going to be like a decent golfer? Yeah. Where do you usually go golfing at? You go. Uh, we have a course near my house. Do you go golfing with your friends or your family, or who you go with? Uh, normally my dad. Nice. So are you able to beat him yet or not yet? No. Oh, he's like a pro golfer? So he can basically fix anything on a race course, and he can golf? That sounds like a pretty good dad. <laughs> And does he teach you how to golf? Yeah. He does. That's pretty cool. What's your favorite thing to do at the golf course? Like just hit it as far as you can? Definitely. That's it? Are you like the Happy Gilmore guy? Have you ever seen that movie where he like goes up and he hits it like with a base, like baseball bat style? I may have tried a few times. <laughs> do you yell and scream when you do it too? No. <laughs> you just go up and crank it as hard as you can? Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. I need you to try it with the radius rod. With Whoa. The radius rod. That would be kind of crazy. I don't think it would go very far. I feel like try. it would barely go. What's your favorite club to use then? Just a nine iron? I think I would use my five iron. Oh, really? That's your favorite one? Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. That's a neat uh, sport to be involved with because it teaches you a lot of patience. It teaches you accuracy. It teaches you visual skills. It teaches all kinds of stuff, right? So you, how do you use those in racing then? Are you able to translate them back and forth? Uh, a little bit. Like what's your favorite thing in the golf then? Like just hitting or like when you leave, you're like, oh, I hit that one perfectly straight and it was like accurate. Uh, I've had a few shots where I've gotten it really far and really straight. Really? Yeah. And then so you're pumped on it and then you just like go to the races and you're like, yep. I can see perfectly straight in a long distance now. That's yeah. the way I would be take, taking it, man. Uh, okay, so maybe you could tell us. Uh, we already asked like who your heroes were, but uh, let's just say you out of out uh, outside of off road racing. Um, do you have anybody that you look up to? Not really outside of racing, no. No, you just got racing heroes. Yeah. Seth Seth Quintero is a good one, man. He's doing a good job. Um, what are your plans for twenty twenty one? Like for the rest of the year? I think my plan is just to uh, do my best at all the rest of my races. Do you have any other plans? Like I want to go at least see one of my sister's cheer competitions? <laughs> I think I might make it to one of them. <laughs> or maybe two. You're not that interested in cheer? Uh, not really. <laughs> I won't fault you for that one, dude. That's okay. Um, okay, so we're going to um, kind of wind down the show a little bit. Do you um, have anybody that you want to say thank you to? Uh, I'd like to say thank you to my dad, my mom, and my sisters for always helping me out. Yep. 
They're your core support mechanism, right? Your family is always going to have your back. Yeah. How about some of the people that help you? I see you're wearing a four-wheel parts hat, and we're sitting in four-wheel parts. Maybe you could thank them. I have some sponsors that I can sing. Yeah, you want to do it? Yeah. Okay, go for it, bud. I would like to thank four-wheel parts, Scanlon Motorsports. Yeah, Craig. Polaris Razor, GBC, Car One Fabrication, Walker Evans. Yep. Super ATV, HMF, KMC. Yep. PRP, Benchmark. Dude, how many sponsors you got? A few. <laughs> uh, Action Gas, uh -huh. American Material, Motul. You got a lot, bud. Gearhead Coffee. I think there's one that I'm forgetting. So you got a coffee sponsor? Does that mean you drink coffee? I do. Dang. You Wait, know who is, else is like? Is it Cryo Heat? Yeah, that's the one that I'm forgetting. Cryo Heat, yeah. Those guys are awesome. Uh, so you have a lot of sponsors that are also sponsored of this show, so that's pretty cool. So we have that in common. Uh, one thing I was going to mention right now, though, um, do you know Maddie Wedeking? Uh, She's just a little bit addicted to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should try to hook her up with some sort of coffee sponsor, too. Maybe make those uh, connect those dots for her. That would be pretty cool for her, don't you think? Definitely. <laughs> You'd go broke off her. You'd make a ton of money off of her. <laughs> yeah, her I, too. You probably would, right? Um, okay, so we're going to do uh, – well, you did good, man. That was good to remember all that stuff. And you just do it off the cuff, or did you have that memorized in your head? Because that's pretty cool. Uh, I had I had it memorized. Hey, so one thing that I was going to tell you, and I was going to tell this to Caden too, um, and I was going to just tell it to you during the week. I was going to text you, Caden. But um, so – one thing that I think would be um, really cool to start seeing from any off-road racers, in fact, even the top guys like R.J. Anderson or Kyle LeDuc or any of those guys, is when we talk about um, relationships and sponsors, I think it's really good to understand who the people are that are helping you out. Like, um, So, for instance, we'll use Ryan at KMC Wheels. Like, Ryan does a lot for a lot of riders and drivers. Um, when you say thank you to KMC Wheels, you could easily just say thank you to Ryan over at KMC Wheels because he is the glue that holds my partnership together because that really means that you're thanking him and shaking his hand just like you would go up and you would thank him after the races. If you do it on the podium, it really means a lot to those guys because those guys put in a lot of hard work and a lot of man hours during the week to help support all these racers like yourselves, like me and this little janky show that we have or even RJ Anderson for that matter. So um, I like how you did Scanlon Motorsports and, you know, we're thanking Craig and stuff like that. So maybe that could be something that you concentrate on in the future for your uh, marketing and media program. I think it would be a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to wind down the show a little bit. Uh, Caden, I think you also would like to thank Four Wheel Parts for letting uh, them uh, us come to their store, right? Yeah. All right. You guys want to do a rapid fire Q&A? You want to do it with him or you want to just let him do it? How um, about how about care. how about you and I share? You ask him the first question, and then I'll ask him the second one. All right. So, what's the first question you got there, Caden, for the rapid fire Q and A with Jake and Peter? Dunes or the river? River. You're going river? Yeah. Dude, I kind of thought you were gonna pick the dunes. How come you're going river? Uh, I just like boating, wakeboarding, and jet skis. We didn't even know this, man. You could have told us sooner. What the heck? Uh, okay. Wow, this one I already know. Three wheeler or quad? Quad. Quad God. Adam uh, Cincerilla or Osborne? No, Osborne. You're going Osborne? Yeah. What? Who did you think was going to win on Saturday night? Did you think it was going to be uh, Roxon or Webb? I, I thought it was going to be Roxon at first. I thought it was going to be Sexton. Oh, you thought it was going to – yeah. At, uh, for yeah. The, I was talking about the championship, but you guys are right. Like, I – um, for the race. I kind of thought it was going to be Roxon too. I was, like, super pumped. I mean, he fell back fast. I dude, I'm a huge there. Roxon fan, Me though. Too. He's Me so too. awesome. But, uh, you He's fast. He just can't last. You really got to commend Cooper Webb for having that race craft. And all these things that I've been telling you guys all night about goals and thinking and processing information and stuff, that's what that dude does so well. Yeah. Like, he can read the race. Kind of like how Jacob was reading these questions before we finished it. Fast. Cooper Webb can read those races before they even happen, it looks like. You know what I mean? Like, his brain is just bar none better than his competition. Yeah. So, um, all right, what's the next one here? Pizza rolls or jalapeno poppers? Pizza rolls. You're going pizza rolls, even though they burn the crap out of the top of your mouth? <laughs> yeah. 
what's the next one, Caden? Coffee or tea? Coffee. Oh, yeah. And uh, you're supposed to do that uh, sponsor plug right now. Coffee. Oh, but this kind of coffee. Gearhead coffee. Yeah, that's what I like to see, buddy. Uh, what's your favorite soda? Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke? That's yes. a, I, every time I see him, he has a Cherry Coke in his head. I'm not really? kidding you. That's, his, that's the only thing he just Dude, we have a discussion about sodas all the time on the show. Like, everybody picked off-road is Dr. Pepper, right? Even Ryan B., like, we brought pizza and stuff to his show. And uh, he's like, yep, you brought Dr. Pepper. Way to go, off-road guy. Like, off-road is Dr. Pepper, right? I like, like that's, Dr. Pepper. But I always think, like, could we change it to Cactus Cooler? Like, somehow, cactus Cooler would fit. Somehow infiltrate off-road with Cactus Cooler instead of Dr. Pepper. I yeah. feel like that would be a good fit, don't you? Yeah. And then so uh, also the uh, guys down at the uh, uh, Raceco USA, the Honda guys down in Fallbrook, um, it was funny because I was uh, doing a show the other day, and uh, he sent me a picture. Um, you guys won't know what Tito's is, but it was Tito's vodka and cactus cooler sitting right next to it. And he's like, yep, see, you got us on cactus cooler now. <laughs> so it was a perfect drink, man. So it's cool to see that uh, the show is influencing people <laughs> to yeah. drink different sodas, right? Nobody cares about watching it, but they'll drink different sodas, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, what's the next one, Caden? If you were to have a superpower, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Teleportation. You're, where are you going to teleport to? Anywhere. I'm just like a walking. Oh. <laughs> Dude, these audio clips are going to be off the chain and we could just you, do you, this. You have so many options right now. I'm just sick of walking too, man. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, Uggs or Crocs? Uggs. You're going to Uggs? Yeah. But I thought you were going to the river. You can't, like, switch those. Like, the dunes is Uggs, and then the river is Crocs. You're not going to go in the water with your Uggs on, dude. Like, come on now. I mean. You could easily go in with Crocs. You could go in with Crocs in the you're water. You're uncomfortable, and then you get some cold. Oh, you're saying come to the river with Uggs on, and then just, like, save them until you leave? Yeah. I mean, I guess, but what are you wearing in the meantime, Crocs? Uggs. You can't double up on it. I don't know, dude. Uh, what's the next one, Caden? What's your most memorable race? Probably the world championship where I wrecked Mikey's car going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big topic in this interview. <laughs> really big. Oh, man. way to bring it up, Mikey. <laughs> um, how did you actually like that course, though? Like, I didn't like the course really at all, but I like the whole vibe and everything, the energy of the, the race and stuff was pretty cool. I mean, I liked the course. I mean... Because it, it was different? Yeah. There were spots on the track that I saw were, like, rough and weird. Like, where at? Like, my favorite part of the track was when you went all the way to the top, like, on the go trail, and you came back down, and then you got that long wash and, like, those, like, high-speed drift corners. Like, that was fun. I liked that part. I just hated all the parts where, like... There was one part I remember where, like, you came out of a corner. It was just, like, giant whoop section. Yeah. That did kind of suck. Um, and it got worse and worse and worse, like, every lap, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you end up finishing that race or no? No. Did, well, at, like, later? Did you at least cross the finish line when time passed or no? Uh, I think I did two laps or maybe three. Uh, okay, next question. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Cookies and cream. Ooh, that's a, Ooh, good, that's one. a good one. What are you going with if you had to pick something right now, Caden? Probably go with mint and chip. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to pick that. It's so boring, dude. It's not boring. It's good. Oh, so I learned, uh, well, I don't know what last episode or, yeah, last episode with Chris Blaze, um, Jeremy Gray was telling me that uh, it's not pronounced Sherbert. It's like Sir Bay or something like that. Really? He was corrected. Yeah, I was like, what the heck, man? He's like, yeah, you've been saying it wrong all your whole life. And I'm like, great, dude. Oh, God. So, I have to change it. Yeah. I'd be more confused. That, so I would probably just in, uh, message him, slide into his DMs on Instagram and ask him how it's pronounced because I still don't even remember because I've been using it wrong my whole life, dude. I know, right? Uh, all right, Caden, what's the next one? Uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. You're going dogs? Yes. Like what kind? You have a dog? I had a dog a long time ago. What kind was it? I don't remember. I was, I was, I think I was like five. Oh, you were really young then. Uh, Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. You're going YouTube? Yeah. What kind of stuff do you usually watch on YouTube? You don't get caught in those black holes, do you, where it just like all of a sudden turns into junk? No. What kind of stuff are you watching? I'm watching this guy who like invents a bunch of stuff. Like he made a... 
made a robot that can like kick a football further than like the furthest guy. Dude, so who's the one that just said, uh, yeah, Dale Mitchell just said an engineer. Like, j just hearing that, like, you'd be a fantastic engineer because you like inventing stuff and like building stuff, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> John Lewis just commented in, said, Maddie Wedeking requires a drive through for her coffee. <laughs> do, you, do you think you, that your coffee company could uh, help her out with that? Or maybe she just passes by your house and you have it ready for her. I, I think she needs some on-road support. <laughs> some mobile, like on the freeway that passes her. Here you go. Yep. So you can figure out a way to transport coffee from one car to the other? Yeah, they'll have to follow her around. <laughs> oh, here we go. So John Lewis just said, it's Sherbet. There is no secondary R. Oh, that makes sense then. So, so we say Sherbert. There's Sherbet. no R. It's sherbet or sherbet. I don't know. Maybe sherbet, sherbet, sherbet. You're outsmarting me right now. Yeah. Maybe I'm trying to get too, like, French and, like, bougie with sherbet. Maybe it is just, like. God, I'm going to have to change my freaking reading program after this. <laughs> Same here, dude. I'm so going to have to, like, go and Google and make sure I'm saying it right. So confusing. Not well, confusing. It's or, words. <laughs> or we just don't eat sherbet anymore. We just eat, like, normal ice cream. So <laughs> anytime you go, just don't get sherbet because you don't have to say it. Just skip it. <laughs> uh, okay. Burrito or taco? Mm, burrito. Oh, did I skip you on accident, Caden? Yeah, go to the next. Go to the next one. Uh, Supercross or motocross? Wait, Super. what kind of burrito do you want? Breakfast <laughs> burrito. You're going breakfast. Like, what's in your breakfast burrito? You getting potatoes in there? Bacon, egg, potato. <sighs> that does sound delicious. Have you ever had a chorizo burrito? I have. Dude, those are delicious too. Man, I kind of want a burrito now. Uh, okay, sorry, Caden. Um, Supercross or motocross? Supercross. What are you just because you like the way like the uh, like you can see the whole track or like what's the? It just it feels a lot more technical than motocross track. You know, like uh, a crazy thing that uh, these new new dirt bikes, even the 250Fs, 90% of the track is first gear. Really? Yeah, the whoops are fourth gear or fifth if you're Jet Lawrence. See, you're you're getting me there. You said whoops, and I usually say whoops. Yeah. And I have to correct myself every time. It doesn't matter. I frustrate myself whenever I say whoops. I'm like large bumps. <sighs> uh, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. Uh, but yeah, so it's crazy, right? So like on a supercross track with the the power that these these dirt bikes have nowadays, like it's first gear for a triple, like those big triples and yeah, stuff. I mean, crazy. a lot of times those guys will hit them in second gear and scrub, but. 90% of the track is done in first gear. Yeah, what, what I thought was crazy is, like, some of the uh, Yamaha 250Fs or whatever. Yep. They were almost just as fast or even faster as the 450s. Yeah. Just because how light they were. Like, there's a ton of stuff. Because my uncle's all about that stuff. Yep. And he was telling me about it. I'm like, what? The Cowies use KTM gears in their transmissions. A lot of those Yamahas are three speeds. It's They're crazy, dude. Really? It's nuts, yeah. So when I always get all excited about those CryoHeat Pro Mod transmissions, it's mostly because of all that stuff that comes from motocross because nobody in side-by-side -side racing thinks to do a, what, a, what Josh at CryoHeat did and build a Pro Mod transmission like that. Yeah. If he didn't do that, nobody would use that. Everybody yeah. would just use stock parts, right? So it's always so cool for me to understand that. And that's where um, Josh is actually an engineer. And so those things that you think of, like, are super cool because inventing things like that and making them better – um, will take you a long ways, not only in your racing program, but in your life. Uh, let's see here. What other form of racing would you like to try? Hmm. It could be anything. I always tell everybody, you could be monster trucks, you could be those little crazy speedboats, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Probably go-kart. You want to do go-kart, like shifter kart racing, like what Lewis Hamilton started as? Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. You know, that's the closest thing. Those uh, 125 shifter carts are the closest thing that you can get to racing an F1 car. Really? Crazy, right? Because of uh, the speed that they can obtain, the gear ratios, all that stuff. How low they are to the ground, how much traction they get. It seems like you're not going, like, it doesn't look fast outside, but inside, the, in, like, in the carts, like, just like a normal, like, cart that I do at training. Yeah, like a tag you, cart you or something. You feel like you're going really, really fast, but, like, yeah. in the videos, you're like, yeah, it oh. looks super slow, right? <laughs> um, but it's because you're so close to the ground. The, yeah, the you're like seeing it right there. Yeah, right the perception out. of it is different. All right, Caden, the last question of the night. Go All ahead right. go ahead and give it to him. All right, this is the best one. Chips and guacamole or fries and ketchup? Come on, give us a good one. <laughs> yeah, give us a good one. <laughs> Chips and guacamole. 
There you're we going go. chips there and guacamole. What about what about if it was French fries and ranch or chips and salsa? Switch it up a little bit. No, it'd still be chips and salsa. Nice, dude. Or are you going like salsa before guac too? Yeah. You're going salsa all day. Yeah. Dude, I like your style, man. That's the way to do it. Um, all right. Well, I think you did a great job, Jacob. Thank yeah. you. I think you really did. And thank you very much, Caden, for uh, being such a great co-host, too. You guys had awesome stories. Is there any other stories that you want to share with our audience before we hang up? I have one more. Okay, go uh, for it. One time my car wasn't working at Lucas Oil, and he actually let me race his, one of his uh, his junior one. Really? And I sucked Jacob in practice. Jacob let you? Yeah. I sucked in practice. I sucked in qualifying. I was, like, dead last. And I ended up, like, passing a ton of people. And I got fourth, and, like, I was battling with third. Do you remember what place you got that race, Jacob? I so I don't. still have a picture of it. Of us, I, I was, like, right in front of the junior one. He was in front of the junior two. Nice, dude. It was that's, so fun. That's super cool. Look at you guys with the family support mechanism, the friends supporting friends. I think it's really cool, man. Um, well, talking about support stuff, I really appreciate your mom for supporting this show and doing so much uh, on the sidelines. She's yeah, done she a, does a lot. She's done a great job. She helped line up a lot of the stuff for today. So it was super cool that we were able to do all this stuff, and a lot of it was uh, uh, credit to her. So thank you very yeah. much to your mom for being able to do all that stuff for us. Um, so next week's show, we have uh, the, the legend of legends, Rob McCachran, coming on the show. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite trick truck drivers. Oh, my gosh. He's like, he is a plethora of stories. So uh, I was told by an audience member last time that I should have shut up and just let him talk the whole time. So I think that's probably going to be a good uh, key for me in this next uh, episode that we're going to do. We're going to go to his shop uh, up in San Jacinto and uh, hang out next Monday. And uh, he's going to come down from Vegas. We're going to talk about uh, his Baja, or excuse me, San Felipe 250. Uh, man, he started from way back and worked his way up. And uh, yeah. that guy always finds his way to the front, doesn't he? Yeah, he always does. Like, no matter, like what his position is. It's in. crazy, right? Improving. And that's what I'm talking about, like those mindsets and the mentality. Like you get those mindsets and you can forget about all the bad stuff and just move forward. Yeah, it's his his son Caden, uh he's yeah. he's learned a lot from him and Well, I want to that's one of the subjects we're going to talk about cuz he was racing with Jagged X and they got first place at the yeah, San Felipe. Yeah, he won. I was yeah. stoked. So and then he co-drove the 6100. Did he? I don't know how he did in that. How did he do? I don't think they fin they they broke, but I I'm not 100% what what happened, but I remember seeing videos of, like, well, and it's, like, a video of him and the four, and them stopped and stuff, so I'm not sure what happened, but yeah. I was stoked because, like, he, did, he won the Jagged Axe. I'm like, he's going to have – hopefully he pulls that three out of three hey, in every, a month. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Hey, everybody wants to race a, uh, a spec truck or a trophy truck, right? But now that the UTVs are getting this fast and placing up high, I think uh, Caden has a very, very good uh, – uh, professional career ahead of him in a UTV. So uh, yeah. John Lewis just said I made a breakfast burrito for dinner. Perfect. <laughs> so he's copying you, Jacob. Uh, and then uh, Rusty Baptist said uh, Supercross, highest level athletes of any sport. And I can agree with that uh, a little bit because I don't know any real, other real sports like. Um, but, uh, man, they have some serious, serious uh, talent in that sport for sure. And that's why I talk about when you talk about your visual perception and all your brain processing and stuff. Uh, makes a big difference when you have those capabilities. Uh, so like I said, Caden, thank you very much to your mom. Thank you for coming in and helping out. Jacob did an awesome job here. Uh, Four Wheel Parts has been an awesome, awesome place to be able to do these shows. These guys support everything that we've been doing. And uh, it's just neat to be able to have uh, the shows at a place like this, isn't it? Yeah, it's really cool. I like having it like at a store. And thank you to the managers for staying late with us too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, well, at least they get to avoid traffic. So that's pretty cool, right? Yes. Um, and uh, most importantly, thank you, everybody in our audience. You guys are our lifeblood. I say it all the time. You guys are the ones that support the show and make it so great for us. So we really appreciate everything that you guys do for us. You guys can always slide into our DMs. You can go to at the Dirt Life Show on Instagram, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. And uh, let us know if you guys have any people that you want to get on the show and uh, and talk to or or. Um, Man, we're so busy. We have three or four months worth of guests, but it'll be really cool to see what you guys want to hear. Uh, if you guys have any third grader questions, please submit those to Caden as well. Yeah. Uh, what's your Instagram handle, Caden? At Caden Danbury 27, no spaces. And uh, yours is Jacob underscore Peter 41? Yeah. I think that's what it is, right? So, 
I thought it was uh, it had an underscore in it, but maybe it doesn't. So it's just Jacob Peter underscore, or excuse me, Jacob Peter forty one. So you guys can always go uh, and uh, say hi to Jacob too. He did such a great job on the show today. Really uh, good job. Yeah, um, I appreciate your parents for coming up here and hanging out with us. It was really cool. Um, like I said, you guys are our lifeblood, so please comment in, listen to our audio shows, rate us, uh, do all that stuff that you do on the, on the Internet and help us make our show better. We are really doing a good job, so thank you guys so much. We really appreciate all of our show sponsors, the guys over at KMC Wheels. They do a fantastic job. And like I said, you can go get any of their merch or apparel on uh, wheelmerch.com. Thank you to the guys uh, over there, Ryan. Oh, excuse me, Ryan Edwards over at KMC Wheels. Uh, Ryan Guidus at EFX Tires. He always does a fantastic job. Those tires are awesome. Uh, can't wait to show you what the Unicorn has on it. It's got some really cool stuff. Um, they have EFX merch at, uh, excuse me, wheelmerch.com as well. Uh, thank you to the guys over at Zollinger Racing Products. They're making fantastic products. You can use the code DIRTLIFE at zollingerracingproducts.com. Thank you to the guys at Shock Therapy, uh, shocktherapist.com. Use the code DIRTLIFE, save a whole bunch of money on any other parts, ride improvement systems, get your shocks redone. Thank you to the guys at uh, Solderweld for always being a part of the show. Those guys do a fantastic job making those off-road repair kits, even these little welding blankets. They even got a little slit in the middle just in case you need to wrap it around a tube or something. And uh, thank you to Josh, like we talked about, uh, his ProMod transmissions. Those guys at Crow, he do a fantastic job as well. Um, we really appreciate you guys joining us on this fabulous Monday night. We will see you guys next week with Rob McCachran. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening to The Dirt Life Show.